Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content which may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Wine and Crime, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big time. Oh, yeah. Big time. Grande <sighs> tiempo. <laughs> I finally finished the How to Talk Minnesotan PBS video. I've seen it before. You uh-huh. watched the whole thing again. I revisited it. It's like 30 minutes long. Mm-hmm. It's so good, it's though. It's so accurate. It really is. I love mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Anyone, it's like TPTV, How to Talk Minnesotan. Mm-hmm. It's on a YouTube. Book. There's a love. book. The, the video, it's like made in the early 90s ish. It just, just it encapsulates just, everything. Mm. It's a warm hug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're ever feeling blue, if you're ever missing recommend. your, like, extended Minnesotan family. For real. Mm-hmm. It's all you need. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, it's too hot where I am to deal with more banter. Let's get right to Who it. Who are you where oh. you're from? Oh. <laughs> I'm Kenyon, and I'm overheating. Mm. I'm Lucy, and I am also overheating. I'm Amanda, and I am... <laughs> Choking on pubes. Recovering <laughs> still from COVID. <laughs> choking but on pubes. Choking on pubes. <laughs> but doing great. Choking on chili dogs. Choking on pubes. Sucking on chili dogs <laughs> and choking on some pubes. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> Our two favorite summer dishes. Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Moving oh. on. We Extra have a- pubes on my chili dog. We have a very special fan pick this week, brought to you by (laughs) Alyssa Grogan. Ooh, Seth Grogan's distant cousin? (laughs) Yes, very distant. (laughs) Oh, my God. Grandma Rogan. Grogan. Grogan. (laughs) So Alyssa has selected the topic of floral fatalities. Mm -hmm. We love Mm -hmm. a good alliteration. Yeah. Yeah. And Alyssa says, quote, I started listening back in 2019 when I started my artificial flower business. Oh, yeah. my gosh. It's You're called, like a florist. It's called the Rogue Petal. Oh, and cute. cute. Mm-hmm. I spent so many nights or literal all-nighters flowering, trying mm. to figure out my business and craft and powered through all your episodes. My business is primarily faux plus dried wedding flowers. Ooh. And then in parentheses, sustainable, reuse, recycle, <laughs> <laughs> and art pieces. So roguepedalco.com. Check it out. I gotta I say, might need to reach out to you for next year. I yeah. did look at Alyssa's website, and there are some really cute, like, fern wall hangings. There's, like, home mm. decor stuff. I like yeah. that. Might want to give it a little peek. There's some real cute stuff on there. Amanda's already navigating there. Yeah, I can she see. peeking. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> Aren't they cute? Go- I, first of all, this website is, is really beautiful. Yeah. Dried flowers are really, really pretty. Yeah. And, and even like well done faux flowers are very pretty. Like I have a faux orchid in my bedroom mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I always keep the curtains like drawn tight so there's no light in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, I, got fa- I got some fake flowers. They're not even, they don't even look that good, mm-hmm. but just as like an accent pop in the corner. Yeah. These I mean, they're, look- they're from like Michael's or whatever. I'm sure Alyssa's are way better than what like I have. Like these wedding it, photos, just you nice. cannot tell that these aren't real. Oh, yeah. Like, they look fantastic. All. So, yeah. Rogue yeah. Petal and Co. Rogue Petal And then Co. you can com. reuse them for your next wedding. I know, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or all just right. like around the house. I might, uh, I might look into this. Oh, these yeah. are freaking cool. <gasps> I got to say, too, uh, I have some fresh flowers. I don't know if you guys can see them in my camera. Mm-hmm. Hopefully the the folks uh, donating at $5 a month and up on Patreon can see mm-hmm. them on the video. But oh my God, the nice boutonnieres are so cute. Look mm-hmm. at this gorgeous bouquet. <gasps> oh, that is stunning. Where, mm-hmm. where are those all from? 
I got these from Whole Foods. All their flowers were on sale. And every once in a while, I just like to get a bouquet just for myself to have at yes. home. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we'll yes. kind of discuss some of the reasons some of the benefits in my segment. Oh, okay. My favorite birthday gift that Zach got me last year and I have requested a repeat for this year is a subscription to (gasps) books.com. This is not paid. I wish they were paying us. I want monthly bouquets. But it's... B-O-U-Q-S dot com. And you don't like pick what kind of flowers you want. They just send you a bouquet every mm-hmm. month or every two weeks. I think you can pick. Mm-hmm. Oh. And they're, I've been so impressed. Like they're such good quality. They mm-hmm. last forever. Usually I have my one like still going when the next when one the next arrives. One so like I have like two vases in my house full of flowers ev- like all the time. They stagger. I it's love. It's great. I want to do that. I want to do that too. Yeah. And they're okay. shipped well. Like they arrive they, great. They, are, they arrive great. And I tried other like floral delivery subscription things and I always had issues and I would have to like call customer service and then mm. I've never had an issue with books. Like they're just really good. Again, cool. not a paid sponsor. Not she paid. just likes it. I and just now really I'm like gonna it. I'm going to sign up for that too. All right. I love yeah. that. Okay, so anyway, there you go, flowers. Perfect. Amanda, what is our wine crime pairing for floral fatalities? Maybe something with some floral notes? I certainly hope so. I have this wine in hand, but I am once again not drinking it because I am this close. And if you're watching at home, I'm making a little pinching Mm -hmm. sign with my hands. three quarters of an inch. Yep, Mm -hmm. to being like fully out of my COVID symptoms. And I just want to give myself a little bit more time Mm -hmm. without alcohol. I did take Mm -hmm. a gummy. Mm -hmm. My herbal herbal remedies are kicking in. (laughs) But I just was not quite ready to drink. But I had already gotten this pairing for this episode. So I still wanted to like show it off and feature it. This is from our friends over at Wink Wine Club. And if you are not familiar with Wink Wine wine Club, Wink Wine Club, (laughs) they're an online wine club that, much like Books, delivers wine (laughs) to your door. Books. Books. Monthly, if you like. And they are amazing. If you check them out, I do highly recommend becoming a member because then you get member pricing. And if you forget to order wine they'll like make curate a little box for you and just send it so that you don't Mm -hmm. even have to like think about it you can kind of do a set it and forget it with wink wine club because they get to know what you like they get to know your preferences and then you get this amazing surprise every month of like these amazing wines that you probably wouldn't have chosen for yourself or you can just peruse their incredible and ever-changing inventory and pick out fun new wines every time. Or you can skip your box if you're going to be out of town. Like it's the easiest, Mm -hmm. most user-friendly wine delivery service ever. It's incredible. And the wine doesn't go bad. No. I have a whole cabinet. Yeah, you can build up your supply. Mm -hmm. Now I am never without a gift at a family function, a birthday party, a anything. A cocktail party. Yep. I can easily just be like, oh, I'm going to grab this great bottle that I haven't paired with an episode. And there you go. Yep. You never have to worry about it again. It's amazing. Yep. So if it is your first time ordering from Wink, you should use the link trywink.com forward slash gals. That's T-R-Y-W-I-N-C dot com forward slash gals. You'll get 20 bucks off your first box. Uh, and if you put four or more bottles in your like cart, they take care of the shipping. It's amazing. You will love it. So they have this fabulous wine that I've had before. I don't know if I featured this one on the show though. It is the Rosa Obscura yeah. white blend. This is out of California. It's the 2020 white blend. For That's the viewers beautiful. at home, it's yeah, it's got a gorgeous mm-hmm. kind of like blue hued rose, you know. Situ- image situation situation happening. on the front. It's really, really beautiful. It's a nice, simple, classic bottle. Uh, and here's what they have to say about the Rosa Obscura. Inspired by the deep swirling bloom of a dark rose, this blended white subverts its muse by offering delicate notes of honeysuckle, apple, and citrus Contrasted with luxurious texture and lingering fruit flavors. Just sounds like the salad I just ate. 
Yum. Yum. Like a watermelon (laughs) salad with like hibiscus. It had strawberries and walnuts and apple. Okay, that sounds really good. Mm -hmm. I made my rabbits a really good salad today with fresh carrots, fresh cabbage, and cauliflower. And they, I could hear them through my headphones. (laughs) (laughs) Just luxuriating in their hutch. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is a 13.5% ABV, and I don't know exactly what varietal is in here because uh, it's a California white blend. We've talked about this before. They actually don't have to make that distinction. Um, but given that it's coming out of California and the shape of the bottle, I would assume it's probably primarily Pinot Grigio or Sauv Blanc. Hmm. So. Yeah, it's a popper, but again, I'm not going to pop it. I'm going to let this gummy do its job. I'm going to let this COVID finish working its way out without Mm -hmm. being inhibited by alcohol. And uh, head to Wink, trywink.com forward slash gals and get yourself a gorgeous, beautiful bottle. And I'm going to save it. That's a good bottle. I've ordered that one a lot. It's really Mm. good. It's just like such an easy, you could drink it all year. It's like a great white wine with really any food. It makes a great Mm -hmm. gift. Like it's just a super versatile easy Mm -hmm. wine and a lot of people will like it like with chardonnays and things like that it can be kind of hit or miss whether or not someone's actually going to like it with a nice crisp like blend easy white blend it's going to be a crowd pleaser you can't Mm -hmm. mess that up Mm -hmm. so yeah that's what i got for you i'm drinking room temp water out of a dirty glass yum i love a room temperature water (laughs) i gotta say yep so Doesn't get you in the that molars. was left up here from the last time we recorded. Yep. <laughs> yep, it was it was actually on Zach's nightstand. So God it's knows fine. when the last time it was cleaned. That is it's a dirty good. fucking glass. Yep. yep. It's roll cloudy. I did, I did not want to go downstairs only to go back upstairs. So. I get it. It'll ruin your blood pressure. Yeah. You guys it, need Literally, a your life depends on not going up and down the stairs right the now. The life Pretty of much. you and your child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So whatever. I'll drink some of my husband's germs, whatever. You need it's to fine. get like a Sherpa for your house. Yeah, that'd be great. As yeah. soon as you get married, it's the same germs. That's how families work. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. There's I'm not even no married yet. I think it. it's the same germs. Yeah. No Although avoiding. Bill didn't get COVID, even though I spent my first like three nights of symptoms basically coughing directly Zach into his mouth. Zach never got it either when I had it. I never yeah. got it when Corey had it. That's Fuck so nuts. It makes no sense. And we yeah. were already in New Jersey, so it's not like he could sleep in another room. Like we had to stay in that yeah. room. So he was in bed with me. The whole time. That's that's even more wild. Zach and I, at least once I got my positive test, he slept in a different room. No, he just quarantined with me in that room, assuming that he'd been exposed to it. it. Yeah, and never got it. Never got it. I think I I slept separately from Corey, but we, like, watched movies in the same room together It's still kind of wild, but yeah, yeah. Bill, like, basically walked into the COVID den and walked out unscathed. Amazing. Mm -hmm. He's like that... Gown of burn or luxurious whatever. hair kept him safe. Probably like Samson. Has, has he ever had COVID? Nope, not that we know of. Oh, he and I are in the same boat. I know you're part of a very rare, uh, Rapid, rapidly shrinking, club. rapidly <laughs> shrinking club. Yeah, <laughs> wear so your mask, on tight. people. Mm-hmm. Wear okay, a mask. Uh, Lucy, what is our background and maybe psych for floral fatalities? So I actually do have psych for us this week, which is bizarre. I'm so excited. Okay, so bear with me. It starts out a little slow, but I think think things pick up a little bit. But I didn't want to fail our fan picker by not talking about florists. Right. Mm -hmm. So a florist... Because to be be clear, that's kind of like what they had wanted, right? Okay. Yes, I think they wanted killer florists. Right. But that was a bit... A bit specific. specific. So, so mine I, involves ordering, per, like purchasing and delivering flowers. Okay, that's okay. totally within the yeah. the boundary. And you did yeah. the fan pick case, right? Yeah, I think I did. I think you did. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I did. I did a case. <laughs> well, I know yours was listed in their email because I went to okay. their email. They gave other suggestions. Then yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I went to their email to look. I didn't go with any of their suggestions. Oh. I really Rebel. rogue that pedal up. over here. rogue pedal <gasps> rogue over here. Pedal. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. So a florist is a person who arranges fresh, dried, and silk flowers and greenery for decorative displays and special events such as funerals. Mm-hmm. Oh. And weddings and all that stuff. Yeah. I want to 
I've always wanted to be, I, I've always wanted to work in a floral shop. Mm-hmm. Like since we went and bought like our boutonnieres and our corsages from that cute little flower store in downtown in Excelsior. Excelsior. Mm-hmm. It always smelled so good. It was kind of dark in there. They were always like, like low lighting, kind of like twinkle light, like no yeah. overhead lighting, of course. There's like the yeah, light right. from the cooler. There was like candles. It just it was a little so bit calming. chaotic, but also calm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it smelled incredible. There's lots mm-hmm. of like craft supplies. Yeah. yeah. Lots of like jute. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is from the florist guide. Quote, florists create and design floral arrangements as bouquets, centerpieces, corsages, wreaths, and other arrangements. They clean, process, cut, and arrange flowers, either live or dried, and other greenery and accessories, either according to set layouts or as their own original designs. They also do a lot of sweeping up. <laughs> it's yep. not all it's not all arranging flowers there's like a, a whole shitload of front edge front end shit and then the cleaning yeah. up and yep. then just like running a business yeah mm-hmm. a florist say will also be taken up taken up with preparing quotes taking orders billing and invoicing inventory meeting with clients sourcing flowers and other daily business related tasks which includes telling people what the fuck they want Mm-hmm. So yeah. when when I got married and I met with a gal who went to college with my mom or maybe high school, but now she like runs the high V floral department. Mm-hmm. Like I got really lucky with my flowers, wedding yeah. flowers. But I was like, what do you I, I like this color and this general shape. And she's like, how about, you know, yeah. hydrangeas? And I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is that? Yeah. Taking your, <laughs> taking our like layman Mm-hmm. vision with no terminology to indicate yeah. what the fuck we want. And, and going, you also oh, have you to go. know like seasonally if right. it's going to be available, be available or like three times the normal price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it going to die eight seconds after yeah. I cut it? Well, right. we'll get, we'll kind of get to all that, but yes, you're right. You have to be really knowledgeable about all sorts of varieties of flowers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Many florists are self-employed working in small florist shops Others work in flower markets, warehouses, or supermarkets. So, like, if you mm-hmm. go to, you know, Cub or Hy-Vee or whatever, there's, like, a mm-hmm. floral department. That The person a working there is a florist. Yeah, have really stepped up their flower game, I mm-hmm. think. Oh, yeah. Probably at the expense of the climate because they're probably shipped in from, like, very far away. But we'll Listen, get to there's it. There's no and yes. ethical consumerism under capitalism. Right. Nope. Right. It's not a There's thing. nothing we can do about it until we dismantle it. Mm-hmm. Right. When hired out to make arrangements for, for an event, they need to travel to a variety of places from churches to convention centers to dance halls to funeral homes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Holidays like Valentine's Day and Mother's Day are the busiest times for florists. In the lead up to those days, you could easily expect to put in 12 to 14 hour shifts as a florist. Wow. That would be fucking stressful. That'd be brutal. Yeah. I mean, my mom works in the nursery section at Home Depots, and it's like mm. there's like an eight week period every like mid to late spring to like early summer mm-hmm. where she's just like, I can't make plans. Mm-hmm. It is yeah. fucking insane. I it's can't make plans. It's too busy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's just for plants. That's right. Like, Go- yeah, not even, she's not even like arranging them. Yeah, specifically for have a customer. to arrive by a certain date, or you're going to be, be in dead. massive trouble. Yeah, yeah. you'll yeah. lose your business. And I know those are two different like industries, but it's it's a real, it's mm-hmm. a very real thing. Mm-hmm. Other occasions such as birthdays or anniversaries or events such as weddings or funerals keep florists busy the rest of the year. Or my personal favorite, funerals. <laughs> my personal favorite. <laughs> Lest we forget, funerals. Funerals. <laughs> also memorial services and wakes. Thank you. Mm, mm. <laughs> visitations. <laughs> Shiv up. Oh, yeah. Visitations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally different. Mm-hmm. In the cooler climates of Europe and North America, more weddings happen in the warmer months, so summer can be also be quite busy depending on a florist's speciality and clientele. Mm. Mm. So the Netherlands are famous for their flower markets. Cool ups, I, when baby. I was a kid, when we went to visit family in Europe, we were in Amsterdam for a couple days and we went to like the tulip fields mm-hmm. and also like a tulip warehouse. It's What's it incredible. called? The Royal Flora Holland. 
I don't know. I was 10 years old. I have no idea. But it was yes. pretty It was pretty wild to I see. remember It everything. was very cool. Well, there is a flower auction house near Amsterdam called the Royal Flora Holland. And it is responsible for importing and then re-exporting roughly 40% of fresh cut flowers from all over the world. What? Not even just tulips, just fresh cut flowers, flowers. in general? Yes. Wow. Because a lot of, for example, Kenya exports a shitload of roses. Mm. But you can't, it's really expensive and difficult to get roses from Kenya to, let's say, Minnesota. Sure. Mm -hmm. There are many more like lines of transportations between Kenya and the, the Netherlands and then the Netherlands to the U.S. Mm -hmm. So like they're just a hub mm -hmm. all over the world. Very interesting. I love that Holland has like such a storied and ongoing relationship, relationship with tulips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's not, not just oral tulips, history, though. floral history. <laughs> floral history. Get it? Do you get, I get it? it? I get yeah. it. I get it. Do you get it. that wordplay? Oh, also, I wanted to point out, I deliberately my chose joke? my outfit that it's it's like something a florist would wear, I feel. It's so cute. You look like a trendy florist. It's like mm -hmm. a three-quarter length sleeve duster, open mm -hmm. front. I am wearing my tozeri, which is a squirrel yep. foot on a heavy set beaded necklace. Mm -hmm. that I well, we know your backup tozeri. career. Yep. I, I would love to be a florist, I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Florist Don't, and cool art teacher have similar yeah. aesthetic vibes. Yeah. You mm -hmm. just do your own thing. Yep. So this is from the BBC. Keeping up with the world's demand for flowers involves an intricate and delicately balanced supply chain of workers, farmers, wholesalers, airlines, cargo ships, traders, florists, and supermarkets. Getting something as delicate as a bunch of flowers from one continent to another mm -hmm. without them being crushed or wilting is a daunting technological feat. Yeah. So cut flowers have to be transported quickly using what's called a cold chain. This is a series of refrigerated facilities on farms, trucks, or lorries, planes, and boats, which put the flowers into a dormant state so that they stay fresh. So they travel in refrigerators, essentially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. This allows a rapid transfer from farm to shop within 24 to 48 hours if you're going by plane, says okay. Sylvie Mamias, Secretary General of Union Fleurs, the International Flower Trade Association. All right. That said, time is critical. For every extra day spent traveling, flowers lose 15% of their value. Wow. So Makes for sense. vase life, which is the length of time flowers stay fresh after hashtag reaching the life. customer, hashtag vase life, is, <laughs> Bro, then, do you even vase? is then usually 12 to 15 days. Mm -hmm. I will say I've had this beautiful bouquet behind me. Not Well, the sunflowers too, but the sunflowers aren't that great. They were mm -hmm. on sale, I will mm -hmm. say. But sunflowers can, get, can be tough. They can be tricky. Mm -hmm. They're shockingly... Not you'd as think, adaptable as yeah, I would have thought. Yeah, you think they'd be hardier once cut? They're not really. They're not. They start to wilt pretty quickly. Well, mine aren't mm. wilting. They're just closing. Do you right. see this? Mm -hmm. They're yeah. just like sh shutting. Mm -hmm. They're napping. Sort of weird. They need more yeah. sun. Mm -hmm. Well, I can only give so much. But this other... This <laughs> what other, do you want from me? <laughs> this other bouquet behind me that does have some smaller sunflowers, mm -hmm. they're doing great. They're, they've been yeah. here for about 10 days. They, they look fantastic. Mm -hmm. The biggest buyers of cut flowers are the EU and the US, but the biggest growers and exporters are the Netherlands, Ecuador, Colombia, Kenya, as I mentioned, and Ethiopia. Cool. Mm. R roses, carnations, and chrysanthemums are the most popular blooms. Mm. Mm. Carnations still clinging on. Yep. Well, they're like such a popular wow. like filler flower. They're a big yeah. filler see them flower. in so many bouquets with other things. Mm -hmm. Right. Probably because they're very hardy. Right. And they it's last like baby's a long breath. time. I mean, yeah. Isn't this a chrysanthemum? This pink one? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't fucking know. Anyway. Yeah. They're a good filler flower. Mm -hmm. So as I said, shockingly, I have some psych for us, and this is from Bloom and Wild. 
Research has shown that having a bunch of beautiful blooms around triggers happy emotions and helps lift feelings of depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. But why do humans react so well to flowers, you ask? Mm. Well, for more than... Do tell. Well, for more than 5,000 years, people have been cultivating flowers for their aesthetic and medicinal purposes, as well as the chemical effect that they have on us and our brains. Cool. Yeah. They were cultivating flowers for, like, trade and export in fucking ancient Egypt. Yeah. And, like, just for an aesthetic purpose. Yeah. Yeah, not even, like, the mm-hmm. same as medicinal plants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. So according to <laughs> Lowry <laughs> Dalthwaite, okay. a lecturer <laughs> in psychological interventions at the University of Central Lancashire, says that, quote, When we're stressed, we release something called cortisol, which is the stress hormone, but actually engaging with flowers, smelling flowers, and being mindful with flowers can actually reduce the levels of cortisol and help you feel more relaxed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So flowers are known to stimulate several specific chemicals. I'm going to tell you about three of them. The first is dopamine. Mm -hmm. So our brains Ever heard of it? Ever heard of it. Our brains have grown in a world where receiving flowers is seen as a rewarding thing. And dopamine is triggered by the anticipation of a reward, so they kind of go hand in hand. Whether you're being given flowers or if you see them out in the wild starting to open up during springtime, our brains can sense that it's just like something special. It's like a reward. Mm -hmm. Mm. And that like the horrible days are ending soon. Yeah, it's not winter. Relief is coming. There will be food (laughs) And, you know, and you'll like, feel the warmth of the sun. Harvest is coming. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the <sighs> second chemical is oxytocin. You may have heard this chemical being called the bonding hormone mm-hmm. or the cuddle chemical. Gross. That's Hate because it. oxytocin creates the feeling of trust, romantic, and maternal love. Mm. This is a feeling that's hard to find and easy to lose, but flowers can help to stimulate it. Receiving flowers from someone communicates trust and effort in a relationship. And Unless this makes you're us- in my case. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. What? Uh-oh. When you oh, buy your case flowers? Covering. And- Unless you're oh, in your my case. case. Yeah. Not yeah. my case, but the I case thought you meant- I'm covering. Oh, it's like, I love receiving flowers. Do you feel flowers. blink twice if you don't feel safe at home? No, I feel great. <laughs> I feel great at home. Zach's very good about flower giving i know Mm -hmm. i've seen his flowers they're amazing (laughs) i'm good so oxytocin makes us feel good or i guess receiving flowers makes us feel good and and it could release oxytocin and then we have serotonin which plays a major role in making us happy our best friend sarah Mm -hmm. good old sarah it's why we can it's why it can be found in so many antidepressant medications Mm -hmm. this chemical isn't only released by drugs or food though studies show that serotonin can be triggered by pride so sarah prideful sarah is a leo Mm. (laughs) so when you grow buy or send flowers it gives your brain the sense of pride that it's looking for flowers can help you feel important and special i also read Elsewhere in this article that like like trimming your own flowers and like decorating arranging them and arranging mm-hmm. your own flowers mm-hmm. gives you a sense of pride and accomplishment and th- and that thus releases serotonin. I it totally is a nice process. That. I get yeah. my books delivered and it's like very easy to just kind of judge them and mm-hmm. yeah. but I still feel like I'm doing it. Yeah, like you're yeah. making a floral arrangement. Yeah. Like, I feel well, like, I could, like I could cut these down a little bit, but I also love this extra here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. This is what it is. But I do like arranging a bouquet. Like a, I and grow there are, a lot you can of... take classes on flower arranging. Totally. There are different styles and cultures of flower arranging. Mm-hmm. I grow a lot of plants in my yard that are like cuttable flower perennials. Mm-hmm. And it is really fun to be like, oh, I watered this. And it was like. Yeah. Grown and cultivated by me. And then I cut it when it bloomed in the right conditions. And then I put it in this pretty vase. Like you were there for every part of the process. Yeah. I got an orchid to re-bloom mm-hmm. once. That's huge. In I've my never life. done that. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Also, I'm still isn't there, jazzed about that. Isn't yeah. there like a chemical? Put that on your mi- resume. <laughs> you should. Maybe I'm maybe this was fake news when I read it, but I read somewhere that there was like a chemical element to soil that mm. can also like encourage 
I don't know if it's serotonin or dopamine production. I Just think like it is. The I smell think there of it. Is. And, yeah. yeah. Mm. Like being outside gardening, mm -hmm. inhaling, it's like the spores or like yeah. what, or just There's like all kinds of like medicinal like effects of positive outside. medicinal effects of just being outside, which is bullshit because I really like being inside. But right. Well, the inside has the air conditioning. Yeah. I will say the other day I was, I went out to get the mail and I was like, God damn, it smells really good outside. So then that just led me to like walk around my backyard. I picked mm -hmm. some weeds. I like checked on my hostas. I haven't been in my backyard in like three weeks. Mm -hmm. It's been hot as fuck, but I'm like, mm -hmm. it smells good. I'm just, I was just wandering around my yard for like mm -hmm. 15 minutes. It felt really nice. Mm -hmm. Your body needs it, I think. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah, I go out and like water my plants and pots around in my yard like every day. Yeah, it's good for you. Mm -hmm. We hired the world's worst landscapers and have been dealing with them all summer, and that mm. has increased my cortisol levels, but mm. they're Oops. finally starting to fix it. So okay. it's good. Hopefully next summer, next spring, I'll have lilacs. We put in a <gasps> magnolia tree. Ooh, pretty. That'll nice. be nice. Yeah. yeah. Cat the mint. Oh, mm. I have so much cat mint. That mm -hmm. stuff is so hearty and mm -hmm. so fucking easy, and it just gets bigger and more purple every year. You'll yeah. love it. Oh, nice. It's that really cool. And it's anti-mosquito. Mm -hmm. It's anyway, anti -mosquito welcome and to our true bee. crime podcast. Is that I the know, same right? as catnip? No. It, it's in the catnip family, which is also in the mint family, but mm. it's not That's specifically catnip. That's not confusing. Okay. But cats do like it. Okay. So this article also named three specific flowers that are especially good for the brain. I don't know how fucking scientific this is. Probably not Extremely. very. <laughs> so the first is roses. Mm -hmm. So if you've ever, ever heard the expression, stop and smell the roses, which you have, that's because they produce wonderful mood-boosting endorphins. Ooh. A study in the Journal of Physiological Anthropology exposed office workers to pink roses. Uh-oh, the pink roses come up in my case. Oh, oh good. Oh. Well, the results show that they brought significant physiological and psychological relaxing effects to the participants. Mm. So there's another study that was published in Complementary Therapies in Medicine that showed it was, again, the humble rose that was tested on the participants that helped them feel... I. I, I read the whole article. I think it helped them feel more creative. It also lowered blood pressure. Mm. So there are positive effects to, uh, with roses. I think in particular because they have a really identifiable and really strong smell. Mm. And I feel like a lot of people's grandma smelled like roses. I hate the manufactured like synthetic yeah. smell mm -hmm. and flavor of rose. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. But oh, an real actual roses. live rose smells yes. amazing. It's mm -hmm. like you can't recreate that smell. Yeah. It's yeah. so specific. Mm -hmm. Another flower is peonies. Mm -hmm. So this says I grow those. I love my I peonies. I love peonies. They are peony season is the most hyped up flower season of the year. Um, so people look forward to it weeks before they well, actually so like brief. bloom. It is, and they're so expensive. I they're know. My really neighbor, fucking pretty. The people who had this house before had planted them already, so that was like That's one of nice. our first fun surprises when oh, we luck. got into that season is I was like, what the fuck is this weird weed back here by the garage? And then all of a sudden, and it's like always covered in ants because they're pollinated by ants. I was yeah. like, what the fuck is this goddamn plant? Oh, this is they, so annoying. They're and so then, big. Yeah. And then I was like, holy shit. I saw their little fucking buds. Mm -hmm. And they're gorgeous. They're like light baby mm -hmm. pink on the inside with like a fuchsia trim oh, on the so outside. Ready. And then like the bright yellow pollen in the middle. They're just gorgeous. My I've been meaning to move that bush to the front of the house, but I'm like so scared to move it. Yeah. You're supposed to move them in the fall. I think it would come back, but it's like, I don't want it tucked back by my garage, but I don't want to kill it. So I don't really know what to do. Could know, you but. split it? and like I could split it. It's split big enough difference. that I could split it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll just try that in the fall. My neighbor is like an expert gardener. So sometimes mm -hmm. their shit leaks over into our yard and I fucking mm. love it, oh, including King's, a peony bush. King's nice. flowers are unreal. They're technically Anne's flowers. Anne okay, is the sorry, real genius. Anne's flowers. Sorry, Anne. And the last flower that they name in this list, which I think is mostly bullshit, but they said sunflowers. 
A lot of people really, really love sunflowers. I think it's really more of an emotional them. connection and not so much like a chemical or like physiological thing. Oh, they got tasty seeds. People love sunflowers. They're just, unless they look like this. Mm. <laughs> All right. They're I very say, distinct. Some of mine look good. Like they're very easily recognizable, you know? And like, Oh, I, they remind me of childhood road trips. We would go out to like the Black Hills and there's huge sunflower farms in South mm-hmm. Dakota. And mm-hmm. so you'll be driving along in this absolute middle of nowhere on like Route 90, whatever, with nothing to look at. And a huge field of sunflowers. And then all of a sudden you're in the middle of a mm-hmm. field of sunflowers for like as far as the eyes can see. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Mm-hmm. So like that is really freaking cool. A lot of sunflowers are grown in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Isn't it there? Isn't it there? Like national flower? Yep. Okay. Because mm-hmm. the isn't the flag? Of, oh, I've heard this thing that the flag is blue and yellow it's because of the sunflowers, sunflowers against the blue in sky. the sky. Yeah. Well, that's mm-hmm. what I heard too. I don't know if it's true. Mm-hmm. Which would be really cool if that's mm-hmm. the origin. So speaking of color, interestingly, the color of flowers can also impact how much they uh, affect our brains or um, uplift us. Makes According sense. to Leatrice Iceman, executive director of the Pantone Color Institute, lucky. Ever heard of it? Fun. Color of the year. What a cool. fucking fun job. What a fun and polarizing I know, announcement. I know every someone year. who got to work on the Pantone Color of the Year campaign <gasps> as like a Which stylist. Year? Is it like a voting thing? What is it? Well, she got to, like, once they had selected the color and before they had announced it, she got to work on like styling the shoots. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh my mm-hmm. god, really that would cool. be so cool. I'm always excited to see what the color of the year yeah. is. What is it this year? I have I no idea. <laughs> Great. It's so exciting. We're such big fans. I have no idea. <laughs> I never thought I was a big fan. <laughs> when I worked for an unnamed interior decorating magazine, it was a big fucking deal. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Leatrice Iceman says, quote, our response to color is intensely emotional and flowers can be a catalyst for feelings that stimulate more than just our senses of sight and smell. For example, red is typically a color that symbolizes love and passion, Mm -hmm. but it also has an energizing and uplifting effect on us, just like the color yellow sunflower. I love the color yellow. But other colors like blue and white can have a more calming effect on us. So mm-hmm. maybe that's why, like, you see a lot of white flowers at funerals. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry I keep thinking about funerals, but I just do. Like, what I else love is a new? white I'll flower. I'll never stop thinking about funerals. Oh, right, white flowers. Like white lilies at a funeral. Mm-hmm. Oh, Classic. Yeah. A study by Rutgers University found that having flowers in the office. In the attic. Can increase. Ew. <laughs> 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 Fucking Ew. <laughs> Flowers in the attic can increase productivity, (laughs) innovative thinking, and helps to create a more positive environment to be in. All right. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking Mm -hmm. about flowers, maybe put them in the space where you work in, and that can maybe keep some juices flowing. People will will be happy. Mm -hmm. So lastly, to finish this out, I have some fun facts about flowers. Always. Roses are related to apples, raspberries, cherries, peaches, plums, nectarines, pears, and almonds. Like Mm. genetically related? Yeah. So like a a flower is the reproductive section of a plant, Mm -hmm. you know? It's the sex organ. So any of these plants that produce these various seeds, such as apples, plums, nectarines, blah, 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 Presumably we'll also also bloom. F- also bloom, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, like cherry blossoms and yeah, well, apple trees. I mean, yeah. and you'll see people put like their avocado pits in a window in a jar after getting an avocado. Mm-hmm. And you can cultivate another avocado out of that. People will like cut potatoes in half that they don't eat that have sprouted and you can grow potatoes from those. Like, No, we understand all- how seeds work. We're just- it's just, no, <laughs> it, it's just like, what's crazy to me, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying- <laughs> That, like, why don't we do that more with stuff that we just buy at the grocery store? Like, yeah, it's, it's just it's, time. It's that easy and sustainable. I guess it's not easy. I would probably kill it. But Corey just texted me flowers in the attic and took a creepy clandestine photo of me just now. Corey. Oh, so he walked by and now we need to call alone. the asylum <laughs> to come pick him up. I didn't know he was home. Where'd he come from? Quit spying. He is a cryptid. He's a cryptid. Okay. 
Tulip bulbs were more valuable than gold in Holland in the 1600s. Wow. It was, it was like a crazy investment scheme. I mean, mm-hmm. anytime. Clearly it it's like out. art. Ew, get out of here. Yeah. Corey. Jesus. <laughs> well, it's kind of on you because you always record with the door open, which is insane He's to me. usually never home. Yeah. <laughs> Tulip bulbs can also be substituted for onions in a recipe. If you're low on onions, but you happen to have tulip bulbs, we swap are. it out. Mm-hmm. Onions are way cheaper, so maybe only maybe. do that in a pinch. Wow. I can see how tulip bulbs are sort of like scallops, though. Not scallops, yeah. shallots. Scallions, <laughs> shallots. Shallots, shallots. Yes. Not scallops. I get those confused. <laughs> So if you if you know about saffron, it's a very expensive spice. It's very, it's like stringy. Mm-hmm. So these actually come s- saffron actually comes from a type of crocus flower, oh. which I didn't know. Okay, the largest flower in the world is called the Titan Arums, which is also known as the corpse flower when it blooms because oh, yep. it yep. reeks. It smells like decaying flesh. But oh. these but these can produce flowers ten. Feet high and yeah. three feet wide, and it's like re- they're really rare now, aren't they? Aren't there like whole festivals where people will gather to see yeah. like the blooming of a corpse flower? They only bloom like every like eight years or some shit yeah. like that. Yeah, it's like it's Haley's fucking comet. Mm-hmm. But they're uh, massive. They're creepy. I don't. Mm-hmm. Know. They're not I don't cute. Know. They're wrinkly mm-hmm. and like dark purple and they're, like, yeah they're like, kind of scrotal they are testicular yeah 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 almost 60 percent of fresh cut flowers grown did in you the- google it yeah it's got a big old dick never it's google just it really yeah it is scrotal it's much more glamorous to talk about than to actually look up <laughs> and then i'm just imagining it smelling like reeking corpse or like durian <laughs> or something god yeah. i'm sure it smells just like durian but mm. like stankier Ugh, like no old thanks. durian. No <laughs> thanks. Almost 60% of fresh cut flowers grown in the U.S. come from California. Mm. The juice from bluebell flowers was used historically to make glue. Cool. Very sticky. And last but certainly, certainly not least, my favorite fun fact, foxglove is an old English name derived from the belief that foxes slipped their little feet into the leaves of the plant to sneak up on their prey. Oh, Are did you they? kidding me? That's just a bel- It's like lore, you know? Yeah, they didn't actually. Just the foxes oh. were so quiet because they put their feet into the little flowers. I'm sure <laughs> foxes can be vicious, but I think they are so cute. So They're cute. So cute. Oh my God, that's They're precious. little dog cats. Oh my I God, know. Amanda's losing it. <laughs> you do need a fox. I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> fox glove. That's why they call it fox glove. How fucking fresh. Oh. Love it. Yeah. Oh. Well, I got my period it's deadly. today, you guys. I can't. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Mm. Fox <laughs> glove. I think I might get to it. Poisons. That flower's poison. <laughs> poison. Poison. Well, well done. Thanks. Nicely done. I was that pleasantly, fun fact. pleasantly surprised that I found some psych for this. Fabulous. Yeah. It's been a minute. It has. <laughs> well, let's hear a quick word from our sponsors and then get Boops. into Stack my app. case. I wish. <laughs> We've <laughs> already done great. that ad. Call us. <laughs> Reach out. Reach out. Life can be a little bit complicated, a little bit nuanced. You know, mm. you you want to you want to stay true to your morals and your ethics, but day to day, it is not that easy no but there are certain decisions that you can make that just that just make that line a little bit a little bit a little bit thicker a little more doable yeah Yeah, less blurry yeah so when you stick by what's important to your very core it shows up in everything you do everlane is committed to doing the right thing from start to finish and that means partnering with responsible factories and ensuring every piece of clothing looks and feels great for years to come yeah, I am such a sucker for fast fashion, and I've been trying to, like, get out of that habit. It's a horrible habit. It's not great. And I know there are so many people out there just like me who are also suckers for that. Me. And ev- yeah. And Everlane is so amazing. And that dedication to finding socially responsible factories is, like, 
huge and they do their homework. They use third party audits. So it's not like folks that have a stake in anything. They use certified partners. It's on the up and up. There's tons of transparency in their production costs for every item. And these pieces are built to last. They're pieces. (laughs) Yeah. And they're not like, it's not fast fashion. So there are these classic pieces that are not going to go out of style and you can find stuff that's casual you can find stuff that's a little more work appropriate a little more dressed up i love it and you know one example of how they do their due diligence is they make sure that the factories that they're working with are paying above minimum wage are ensuring safe working environments for their employees uh recycling water facilities using renewable energy repurposing byproducts yes Like they're thinking about the people that are putting these items together and the environmental impact, which is incredible. And these, like I said, they're classics. It's trend proof quality that's made to last. So each garment is made from the finest materials like grade A cashmere. I have several cashmere pieces from Everlane. I love them. Yep. Uh, Italian leather, certified organic cotton. I have this really, really cute pair of like so almost a little more 90s style, sort of like a boyfriend jean. They're high waisted. They have a button fly. They're they so are cute. So cute. They're so comfortable. They look really great with my fancy jellies that I got. Mm-hmm. I'm obsessed. And you have a right to know the actual price of like making your clothes. There aren't just these at unnecessary markups. It's true cost transparency through Everlane. So Everlane shows you the cost behind the production of every piece from materials and labor to duties and transport. And with Everlane, you get designer quality without the designer markup. It's the best. So if you want to do things differently from your core to your closet, shop Everlane. Go to everlane.com forward slash gals, G-A-L-S, and sign up for 10% off your first order. That's 10% off your first order when you go to everlane.com slash gals and sign up. Everlane, helping people live their best lives with the least impact on the planet. Mm -hmm. Treat your wardrobe. Treat it. So saying goodbye to high interest credit card debt is one of the first steps toward financial independence, financial freedom. But the interest month after month can feel like you're in a never ending hamster wheel. Like it just keeps going up and you can't catch up with it. Not great for the blood pressure. No, it's extremely stressful. And that is where Upstart comes in. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest debt all online. Thank God. Mm -hmm. With simple and easy to understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom. So whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear pay update. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. It's like a light at the end of the tunnel. Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score, so rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. This make this makes me feel like such an adult. Mhm. Like, yep. It's really it's a step up into adulthood. I so I'm here for it. So you yeah. can you can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score. You can uh. even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Yeah, so don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash gals. That's upstart.com slash gals to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash gals and treat your debt. Try it. Are we ready for my case, which apparently yes. was the fan picker case, which I did not recall? Ah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. sure it says it in the doc, too. Oh, I you're was right. Like, oh, I she's just... on top of it. Whatever. It's I, fine. It's whatever. Okay. I should never assume that. <laughs> you should not. Not these days. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lita LaVon McClinton was born in Georgia on January 7th, 1952. Her mother, Joanne McClinton, was a Georgia state representative, not to be confused with a different 
politician. And fabric store. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> monopoly Not to owner. Not confused with the fabric store nor the other politician, Joanna McClinton. Yeah. It's my mom, Joanne, of the Fabrics (laughs) Enterprise. And her father, Emery McClinton, was a former U.S. Department of Transportation official. I really like the Emery. Yeah, it's cute. Her family was part of an elite set of highly educated and well-to-do black families in the Atlanta area in the 50s. And she is often described as growing up as a, quote, black socialite. Hmm. Hmm. After high school, Lita attended Spelman College, a prestigious HBCU in Atlanta. She cool. loved fashion. She, you know, she was popular, had lots of friends. Uh, was. Uh-oh. Yep. Uh. Charitable, fun to be around, everything. Mm-hmm. After graduation, she began working in a high-end clothing boutique, which is where she met a man named James Sullivan. Mm. Never meet a man. No. Just period. <laughs> it's just not safe. It's Never out. meet a man. Nor worth it. Spells yeah. doom. At what cost, you know? At what cost? <laughs> I, I just advise against meeting a man. That's yeah. all. Sullivan came into the boutique as a customer and they began chatting and hit it off, although the two did not have much in common at the time. Hmm. Sullivan was white. He was much older than Lita. She was 23 and he was 34. Mm-hmm. And he was already divorced with four children at the time. Okay. That's, that's, you're busy. And I don't, I think. A lot of kids. I think his kids mainly stayed with his first wife. Wife, sure. Like, maybe he had some custody, It probably wasn't, like, 50-50, though. Like, he probably didn't have the kids that much, is what you're saying. Right, is what I'm thinking. But Lita found him charismatic and interesting and was flattered by his obvious interest in her. The two began dating, but when Lita eventually brought him home to meet her parents, they were not impressed. Mm -hmm. Joanne and Emery both felt that Sullivan was arrogant and untrustworthy. They caught him in a lie once about, like, like a stupid lie. Um, I I can't think of anything more, like, humiliating or embarrassing than if, like, Tom and Sue caught me in some sort of weird lie. Right. I don't know. I, I'm like, like immediately ugh. transported back to being like 10 years old. Yeah. And it's cringing. Like, it's like not the mad, just disappointed, but like on an in law. Yeah. yeah. And when, when an adult has now lied to an, it's just a really weird thing. Just don't, don't. It's not great. It's, it's just weird. Not great. Well, I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, they worried about their daughter being in an interracial relationship in the deeply racist South, because at this point, we're just in, we're into, like, what, the 70s? Yeah, I mean, even now, don't trust a white man. Well, yeah. (laughs) Even now, (laughs) it can can um, cause issues for people, you know, because mm -hmm. society fucking sucks. No, it's not safe for people of color to be, like, the only person of color in a room. Like, it's physically not fucking safe. Well, this was, like, not long after, like, the Green Book Yeah. This was still the the late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. Yeah. It's fresh off of the civil rights movement. Yeah, it's even more heightened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lita's mother would later recall, quote, Jim always had grandiose ideas. I remember he told us his father was a publisher for Hearst in California. It turned out that his father was a typesetter for a Boston paper. He, well, I wonder if that was the lie. That, that was the lie. OK, oh. OK. He was working class, blue collar. There's nothing wrong with that. So why lie about it? But he right. was always looking for social acceptance. Always. Yeah. Mm. He's trying to, like, date up. Mm-hmm. In society, mm-hmm. he's trying to impress her parents. He cares a lot. He cares a lot about social status, and that will come up again. Okay, later. Okay. So, despite her parents' disapproval, Lita told them that she was in love, and when she announced her plans to marry Sullivan, they did not try to dissuade her. They just decided to support their daughter. That's lovely. How and generous! I'm so sad for how I can. We can all see this turning out, yeah. given the context of this show. Yeah. According to her mother, quote, we had always told our children, you don't judge a person by his race. You judge him as an individual. So what do you say when they say that back to you? Right, right, right. And it's like, okay, yes, the whiteness historically plays a role here, but there are a lot of other reasons why we do not get good vibes from this guy. We are getting bad individual vibes. Yeah, Mm -hmm. he's not a good individual, Mm -hmm. period, full stop. 
But that's hard to say to your kid who's in their early to mid 20s and in love. I mean, if any if people had said that to me about fucking SoundCloud DJ, I probably wouldn't have listened at the time. There is no talking a 22 something year old out Mm -hmm. of like going to be with the person they love. Right. Mm -hmm. There's none. There's just, yeah, there's just creating distance and isolation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Lita and James Sullivan were married in December of 1976. Some people call him Jim. Some people call him James. I might mm-hmm. go back and forth, whatever. That's fine. Same person. The, the newlyweds moved into a house in Macon, Georgia. Lita continued working in retail, finding a job at a local department store, and Sullivan ran a beverage distribution company that he had recently inherited from his uncle. Okay. So he got very lucky inheriting this thriving business, basically. Yeah, yeah no yeah, shit. His, his, like, socialite goals are starting to shape up here. Yeah. Also very lucrative because my mom's side of the family did the same fucking thing in the same mm. fucking time period. And yeah, people got to drink beverages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In 1983, Sullivan took advantage of an opportunity to sell the business for a large profit. And in fact, this made him a millionaire almost overnight. God. And one day, right, guys? <laughs> Pro- probably not. I I know I'm not going to inherit any beverage companies. Lucy I mean, so, I mean, selling wine and crime and becoming millionaires sure. overnight. Sure, millionaires. <laughs> We're gonna go public and become millionaires. <laughs> Actually, I don't even know how to go public, and I don't think we. I don't, I don't really, really know think what we that qualify. Means. No, no. I don't. I don't even really. No. Yeah, it's like a stock market thing. But that's not, all I know. I don't really. I don't want to. I don't want to. Base my fortunes on the no. public. No. <laughs> on a thing I have no grasp of. I, I'd be, <laughs> we'd be driven into the ground by the yeah. general public. I'd just be going out in public telling people about wine and crime and then be like, we went public. With Why like a, are we we've not We've gone public. Public. Like, I declare publicity. Amanda with a sandwich board on the corner. <laughs> we've gone public. <laughs> We've gone public! I didn't say it. I declared it. <laughs> so he and so now he's got all this money, and he and Lita move into an oceanfront mansion in Palm Beach, Florida. Because wow. five million dollars. Okay, my dream. I'm so sorry for you. Yeah, multi million dollars <laughs> in 1983. You could do that. I want an ocean, a beachfront mansion. Who doesn't? There's a lot that I want. I want to pay off my student loans. Yeah. There's a lot that I want. want. (laughs) A lot. Add it to the fucking list. List. (laughs) So Sullivan had hoped that his new wealth would allow him to climb the Palm Beach social ladder, but soon found that their new community was less than accepting of an interracial couple moving in. So they kind of thought, we'll get out of Georgia. We have all this money. Like, Mm -hmm. they'll accept us because we have this money. Didn't quite work out that way. Which, like, the privilege of him to be like, God damn it, now I'm having a hard time being a socialite because of my interracial marriage, while his wife is like, I have to fear for my life because of my interracial marriage. And his wife's, I mean, just on paper, his wife's social status is better than his. Yeah, he he was marrying her to use her in the fucking first place. Yeah. What an asshole. Frustrated, Sullivan began blaming Lita for his lack of social status in Palm Beach. Oh my God. I'm a loser and it's your (laughs) fault. What a fucking lunatic. And Lita's friends back home, who initially thought she was living a glamorous dream life, began worrying about how isolated and miserable she sounded on the phone when they would like have their catch up calls. Yeah. And although Sullivan was wealthy, he was controlling. Mm. and severely restricted Lita's access to money, leaving her even further cut off from the world now that she wasn't making an income of her own. She wasn't working in retail anymore. Yeah, why don't we just follow paragraph by paragraph the abuser's playbook? Yeah. Here's the the roster. Remove independence. No job. Control funds. Control the money, yep. Mm -hmm. Blame for your own shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The guilt tripping and, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. uh, hyper-focus on, like, social status. Uh-huh. Yeah, clear Outward. and apparent narcissism. Yep. Yeah. Thousand percent. He's checking off every fucking box. Lying about stupid shit, being really mm-hmm. arrogant, parents don't like him. <laughs> Kenyon just keeps going. 
It's I got, true. It's every I got time. single box. It is. Yeah. It's, an, it's unbelievable. Ugh. So not long after they moved, Lita began finding evidence that Sullivan was having affairs. Mm, wow. Okay. These included see that coming. blonde right. hairs and women's underwear that she found in their bed. Jesus fucking Christ. Have the get, decency get to a get motel. a hotel. Yeah. Don't, I mean, don't, don't do it Don't bring it, it into all, my but, bedroom. Yeah, that would be... That's yeah. the most offensive part. Honestly, it, it would be for me, too. I'd be yeah. like, Bill, my this is fucking bed. weird. But those are... I just... I washed those sheets. Yeah. I bought that bed. I was given that mattress. Yeah. Long ago. Ass. Long ago. That's my pillow. Long yeah, ago my, in a former life in a former lifetime, I've had this experience and I can tell you it is not it's um, not nothing good. feels quite as bad. It's one yeah, thing it's being violating. cheated on. It's another yeah. thing being like, oh in the place here? where you sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where I was 24 hours later. Yep. Oh, it's so yourself. violating. I It's, it's not disgusting. fucking okay. It's and like you know knowing someone's broken into your house. The sheets. No. Oh, no. Absolutely not. You've lain in the same not. stain. Ick. So I need the- to shower now. Yeah. <laughs> So although 17 she, years later, <laughs> she, although she felt deeply betrayed, she didn't want her marriage to be seen as a failure. You know, it's still the 80s. There's a lot more stigma. Mm-hmm. So she began going to counseling and talking to Sullivan about ways to move past his affairs. And he like pretended to be on board. Yeah. Just to probably get her off his fucking back. Yeah. So he could just keep doing whatever the hell he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, a thousand percent. I am ready to murder this man. <laughs> good. good. <laughs> Someone should. Oh. The final straw for Lita came when she learned that despite her best efforts to move on from the betrayal and the counseling and the working on the marriage and all that shit that she was doing, Sullivan had continued to solicit sex workers that mm-hmm. whole time. Mm-hmm. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Probably unprotected. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's totally speculation. But. I have respect for sex workers, of course, but that's something wrong with getting there. sex workers. It's the cheating on the wife with right. multiple partners right. without knowing, and without like it wouldn't knowing, matter without knowing that you had protection. I'm right? Not it's about, anecdotal like, that they're sex workers. He could have just been sleeping with multiple women, women unprotected. Yeah, 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 and that's, it would be equally as egregious and fucked up. Right? Yeah. So with this news, she packed her bags and returned to Atlanta, moving into a townhouse that they owned in the upscale Buckhead neighborhood. So I think they just had this townhouse for like when they went to Atlanta Mm -hmm. to visit family and like as an investment property, probably. I just want a townhouse in Franklin, New Jersey for when I visit mother. Wouldn't that be great? (laughs) I yeah, don't want a I just need a Minneapolis Jersey. townhouse for right. when I visit my mom instead of you, sleeping on the floor in her apartment. You do need a Minneapolis just a cash loft. Yeah, yeah, just a casual loft. Loft, God. loft. <laughs> so love a loft. So I she files for divorce and requests half of Sullivan's five million dollar estate. You should have. All of it. Yeah. He wouldn't have even fucking really... Well, okay, I guess the uncle that left him something, but it's like he'd have fucking nothing without her anyway. <laughs> mm. She should get it all. Well, he all. didn't even, like, really earn it, you know? Get it all. Get it. It is trash. <laughs> so back home, uh, she's back in Atlanta. She's filed for divorce. She's away from him. She's Starting back surrounded her around her loved ones, her family, her friends. She begins to feel, you know, much better, less miserable, less isolated. She, like, reconnects with all these people. She starts doing regular charity work, and she even starts, like, casually dating again. God, that feeling when you're, like, coming out of a Mm -hmm. trauma or a depression that you, like, didn't even really notice until you're coming out of it, and you're like, oh, I have, like, bonds and relationships with people, Mm -hmm. and, like, I am capable of feeling joy. Yeah. And then the like grief that comes with that where it's like, oh, my God, how much time did I just waste? Yeah. Unknowingly Mm -hmm. like miserable. Yeah. It's a weird feeling. But yeah. Of like relief and grief all at the same time. I just really feel for her like that's fucking sad. And I think most people have been through some, you know, a similar feeling of like, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm getting my life back after this dark time. Yep. It's Come weird in. to explain because it's like not intuitive. It's not logical necessarily, mm-hmm. but it's like 
very real. Mm-hmm. It's also weird to explain because the gummy has fully. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm moon rocking right now. <laughs> so her, this divorce was long and drawn out. There was. Yeah, because he's a piece of shit. And he's right. not going to make it easy on her. Yeah. So on January 16th, 1987, this is three years after she moved out of their Palm Beach home. And And just a few months before I was born. And initially filed. The divorce is finally scheduled to be finalized. Like T's crossed, I's dotted. It's it's going to be done. It's going to be May. The hearing scheduled for that day would determine the final amount of the divorce settlement. Salida was set to receive either $250,000 or up to $1 million, as well as possession of the townhouse that she'd already been living in. Mm-hmm. So there, there's this hearing is scheduled, and then that's it. Yeah. So Lita's best friend, Poppy Marable. Oh, my, like P-O-P-P-Y? What? Like the flower? Poppy. No, P-A-U-P-Y. Well, I don't know. It could be Poppy. P O P P I E. P A P I. I Poppy. Poppy. I just think that is the cutest name. Poppy is a cute name. Poppy Marable. That's a really oh, sweet. Like name. Poppy Marigold. So Poppy is her best friend, and Poppy has a three-year-old daughter, and they spent the night at Lita's townhouse the night before the hearing as like a little like girlfriend sleepover. Like, yay, you're getting divorced. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I love, love that. that we would totally do yeah. that. Yeah. Oh my god. Poppy. What so a good don't friend. finish your case. Can we just leave it at this happy this part? This is like the, the last part time in the it's happy. Movie. Oh. But it's about to get scary. Yeah. <laughs> just don't finish it. <laughs> if you don't finish it, maybe it will change the past. It definitely won't. Yeah, well, I'm going to get to the gruesome stuff. So <laughs> the two friends woke up excited for this momentous day in Lita's life. You know, it's the morning. They're going to go to the court later that day. <laughs> then shortly after 8 a.m., the doorbell rang and Lita went downstairs to answer it, still oh, wearing her God. nightgown and bathrobe. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to cry. I got my period today. <laughs> yeah, I can't we can with tell. This. You've almost cried at like. Three different things, including okay, foxes. Okay, foxes putting on tiny fucking flower mittens. Are you kidding me? If you're not crying at that, you are a monster. Tiny fucking flower what? mittens. Are you on kidding foxes? Me? Get your no, head out of your ass. They're park dog and what are you, an ice queen? Yeah, what are you, a fucking sociopath? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get your laughter out now because this is where shit turns. <laughs> okay, it's out. <laughs> okay, so this, all of this, God it's so it. happy, and then she fucking goes downstairs to answer the doorbell. Oh, good. <laughs> she was never ex- answer the door unless you're expecting food. She was excited Don't to see answer a- it then. No. Leave it on the doorstep. No. Jesus. that's true. Yeah. She was excited to see a flower delivery man holding three dozen pink roses. Oh, oh God. no. Assuming they were from friends or family to congratulate her on the divorce being finalized, oh she answers the door. Mm. But the delivery man was not a delivery man. He was no all. florist. Hitman. He had a nine millimeter gun hidden <sighs> in the roses. <gasps> Which he pulled out when Lita opened the door and fired several shots at close range. Oh, my God. One of which struck her in the head. Oh. What a fucking. I I hate it. That's like a pussy way to cover up an assassination. It's sick. That's so fucking sick. It is really sick. The, like, actually deeply disturbed. Let's bring this thing that's associated immediately with, with joy. Like, joy. Well, she'll open the door and be happy, and then I'm going to shoot yep. her in the fucking face. Right, and 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 not be nervous to open the door, because it's like, oh, this beautiful gift. It's a flower delivery person. It's a safe person. It's like, the Papa is... John's person. It's a yeah. safe person. That's fucking- Papa John's is never safe, but yeah. No, but that's fucking um, Garlic vile. butter, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. So upstairs, Poppy panics at the sound of gunshots. And has her daughter there. Yeah. Oh, Oh my God. So Poppy grabs her three-year-old daughter and hides in a closet until, like, 
the authorities get there because oh, what else would you do? God, oh my God. A neighbor also heard the gunfire and like came over to ch- check out what the fuck had happened and found Lita in her entryway, like still alive, but, <gasps> but oh, like my not, God. Bare- but like yeah, gravely barely. wounded, not oh. able oh. to no. get better. So she was transported to the hospital, but died of her injuries not long after arrival. Oh, my God. So Lita's friends and family were immediately certain that James Sullivan was somehow responsible for Uh, her death. Yeah, I'm certain. We're all fucking certain. The police agreed it had obviously not been a random murder. Uh, She was targeted. No one else had a reason to want her dead Mm -hmm. besides her husband. Like, he was the only one who stood to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And he was about to lose potentially half his fortune in this divorce settlement. And he's a fucking piece of shit. Why not just get hire a skywriter to fly around yeah. saying I did it here's <laughs> right. where I live I'm home waiting for you I do want to hire a skywriter though well yeah he may his he may as well have yeah mm-hmm. so unfortunately James Sullivan had indisputably been in Palm Beach at the time of Lita's murder and I'm sure he like I don't know did the that details on purpose. but he made sure that people like could corroborate that he was at his yeah. home in Palm Beach. Look at me, I'm yeah. in Palm Beach, everyone. Yeah. His right. sandwich board. He's fucking making himself an alibi. Yeah. So investigators were able to determine that Sullivan had received a phone call from a rest stop outside of Atlanta on mm-hmm. the morning of Lita's murder, which they believed to be a confirmation call from the killer to let him know that the job was done. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Mm-hmm. But th- it was ser- it was like they didn't have the content of that call, right? They just had the time and the it. location. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of circumstantial. Like, why would you get sus. a call from a payphone outside of Atlanta? Atlanta at this time, right? On this day, but, but it's also not. It. Yeah. yeah. So still not enough to definitively tie Sullivan to the murder, and the identity of this hitman was still a mystery. They didn't know who had actually pulled the trigger. If this fucking guy doesn't go down for this, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to lose my goddamn gourd. I, I, okay, keep going. That really would be a thorn on the rose. Mm. Oh my God, that's a sunflower, but yes. yes. <laughs> I don't have any roses. <laughs> so for a while, some suspicion fell on Poppy Marable's husband. Absolutely fucking not, Poppy. <laughs> don't touch Poppy. Poppy, no guilt. No Leave guilt for Poppy. Leave Poppy out of this. Poppy no gu- is untouchable. No Whoa. guilt for Poppy and also no guilt for Marvin, but this I'm just telling you in hindsight, no guilt for Marvin, but suspicion fell on him for a while and I'll tell you why. So Poppy's husband, Marvin Marable, was a former New York police officer turned businessman. And because Poppy and Lita were best friends, Marvin and James had also socialized together for years because, okay. you know, their wives are best friends. OK. And he's a cop. And he was a cop. cop. Yeah. All right. And around the same time that Lita was dealing with the divorce proceedings, Marvin began to suspect that his wife, Poppy, was going to imminently file for divorce from him. Oh, thinking it's like, oh, she's hanging out with her best friend again, seeing how happy she is when Ooh, she got yeah. divorced. Is my well, wife going to leave me? Women's chit chat. Yeah. Gonna right. Infect my wife. So Women's chit chat yeah. is going to infect my wife. And they do eventually Honestly. get divorced. <laughs> oh, so no. like so like Poppy and Marvin's marriage was not in a great place. Well, I mean, congrats for Poppy then. Fuck yeah. Marvin. Yeah. So he wanted to be prepared in case his wife was going to file for divorce. So mm-hmm. he secretly bugged their home telephone. Okay, Marvin. Wait, why is everyone a happen? fucking Why is every man a psychopath? Yeah. This uh, did happen. He did this. This is all before Lita is murdered. This Poppy is, she's, can do better. They're get, you know, she's planning to get divorced and this time, like, time is going by and Never Marvin, meet a man. I don't think I should get married. I'm texting Bill. You need a I'm prenup. texting. And maybe oh, a bodyguard. Yeah. It's off. Prenup. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he might agree with you because you did trick him into watching the lake house. <laughs> yeah. And I need to make sure he can't come Make me. me the beneficiary of your life insurance. Absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Oh, absolutely shot. not. Okay. <laughs> Worth a shot. <laughs> Thought I'd ask. <laughs> Just put it out there. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. 
Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott, Kenyon Lane. <laughs> I just drooled. Oh, okay. I a shot. Thought I saw an I opening a shot. there. <laughs> just wanted to shoot my shot. Listen, my life insurance isn't <laughs> worth much. Diabetes party of one. Party of type one. Party of <laughs> type one. Oh, no. Okay, so Marvin bugs <sighs> his own home telephone so that he fucking can record psycho. his fucking wife. Fucking I psycho. Never meet a man. It's just, it's not worth it. And so he amasses. They're amass- always going to disappoint you on <laughs> yeah. some, at some point. It's an inevitability. So he amassed tape recordings of his wife's conversations, including many with her best friend, Lita. Yeah. And all of this, again, is before Lita's death. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. So when Sullivan found out that Marvin had these tapes, he requests copies of them from Marvin. And Mm -hmm. Marvin assumes that it's just for this guy's... Divorce own divorce proceedings, proceedings or something. Yeah. And Marvin insists that like he and James weren't like tight In friends. Cahoots. They were just like couple, you know, they were just like right. husbands yeah. that were thrown into socializing Occasional together. Corey and Bill. Forced <laughs> double date yeah. situation. Yeah. Corey and Bill whenever Corey we go down to Bill. Iowa. <laughs> yeah. But he's he like, only yeah, man. Once. Yeah, they're not <laughs> hanging out. No. He's on still their gonna own. he's still gonna help him with these tapes. But they occasionally the, text. Yeah, it's exactly divorce this bros. relationship. Mm-hmm. Divorce bros. <laughs> <laughs> so Marvin agrees, and he sends the tapes down to Sullivan in Florida. And he also answered some of James's questions about Lita, like what car was she driving? No, and what? is she is she actually living in the townhouse still? Because like they had ceased to have direct communication. It was all through lawyers. And Marvin just answered the questions because he thought it was just part of a divorce proceeding. And and James was just trying to, like, get clued in on her assets, you know? Oh, my God. No, he wants to know exactly where she's going to be when so he can have her killed. Oh, my God. That's so fucked up. In hindsight, we know that now. Ew. Oh, that's so creepy. Yeah. Yep. Because, like, I'm even I can't even really judge that too harshly because how many times have any of us, but especially me, hung out with like some mutual friends that might still be mutual friends with an ex of yours. Mm -hmm. And I want like all the tea. Mm -hmm. I want to know where they're living and what they're up to. And like, so I can't say that if I were in Marvin's shoes, I wouldn't be like, right. oh, you want the gossip? I have the gossip. You would have I'll done tell you whatever you want to know. Same thing. I mean, Absolutely. the tapes, obviously, that's that fucking would psychotic. would give me pause. Yes. But the answering, like, yeah, she's living, she is living in the townhouse and right. she's, she's driving like this car if you want to, you know, list that as her, one of her assets. An and, asset. Or, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I could see it. I could see it. And even also a little bit like comings and goings. Like, oh, is she going to show up at this place where I'm already there? You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to run into her. Well, he was in a different state. Right. James he is was, living in Florida still. And she's he was up still in, in Florida. Atlanta. She was okay. staying in Atlanta. But still. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't. They were pretty basic questions okay, yeah. that he answered. So anyway, meanwhile, James Sullivan adamantly denies any involvement and insists that Lita's murder must have been the result of a botched drug deal. Oh, okay. Because everyone's abso- dealing drugs. There's just no fucking evidence of that at all. That is the most absurd. That's so stupid. Yeah, it's fucking dumb. Fucking asshole. Don't yeah. spit on your ex-wife's fucking grave like that. Yeah. I'm going to, I I hate this man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then um, about a month after the murder, a conversation between Sullivan and a friend was picked up by police wiretap. How does it feel to be bugged now, bitch? Yeah, suck it, Marv. (laughs) (laughs) How dare you do that to Poppy? That was amazing. (laughs) So in it, Sullivan was talking to his friend and talking about Lita's murder, and he mentioned that she'd been killed with a 9 millimeter handgun, which was a piece of information that that had not been released to the public. You fucking Idiot. idiot. Fuck you. <laughs> but still, the murder weapon hadn't been found. The hitman hadn't been identified. They hadn't found any, like, money tying Sullivan to a hitman. Like, it was still 
pretty circumstantial. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that he knew the nine millimeter thing is bad, but it's not like enough. It's not yeah. smoking gun for lack of a better term. Right. Bad. Mm-hmm. So they're still not ready to prosecute him for mm-hmm. this because they don't want him to get off. So eight months after Lita's death, Sullivan married a different woman, Hayo Suk Choi Rogers, who went mm-hmm. by the name Suki. Mm-hmm. So Suki was also a socialite and also mm-hmm. way younger than him, 13 mm-hmm. years younger than him. Had a type. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She had been dating Sullivan at the time of Lita's murder. And again, like they, their divorce had been going on for three years. So like that's not that shocking. Right. And at first, she publicly supported his claims that he was totally innocent. Mm-hmm. Then in 1990, Sullivan got into a three-car fender bender in his 1973 Rolls Royce. I feel like when it's three cars, it's no longer a fender bender. It's like a pileup. Right. (laughs) But I don't think they were going very fast. Right. There probably just wasn't that much damage or injuries. It's just funny that, yeah. Yeah. So when a police officer arrived at the scene, he realized that Sullivan had been driving with an expired registration. Got him. Oops. Let's fucking go. Not only that, but he had been labeled a habitual traffic violator. Same. Because (laughs) he's (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I haven't been labeled as such, but. You may have unpaid parking tickets. (laughs) I've been really close. Oh, yeah. I've had my car, not this car, but I've been towed for scoff law like three times. What's scoff law? Not paying for literally scoffing in the face of your parking ticket. It so they take your car off the street <laughs> and make you pay all of them back before you can get your car back. And you have to pay the like lock fee and the towing fee, which is like $250 a day. Am I supposed to feel bad for you about this? Because I no. don't. She <laughs> choices the were my made. Fault. Yeah. One of them I paid to get it out. The other I just left it until they auctioned the car off and I never had to pay it. I was like, fuck it. You want the car that bad? Just have it. I got that thing for like $300 <laughs> on Craigslist. Je- Left Blackland's car? No, different car. <laughs> but I yeah, when your car, when your car is like not worth the amount of the tickets and I, fines. No, it's effectively I, totaled. A thousand percent. It, it, literally. So I was like, no, I'm not taking it out. Fuck that. <laughs> oh my God. And then the other time that I didn't go pick up a car, I actually got a check in the mail. <laughs> For that car. So this was my Nissan, which died in that abandoned Burger King parking lot next to my old apartment. What color are these cars? That's the only way I remember this. Black Nissan. Was, black Nissan is the one in the Burger King lot. With the stickers Scoff all lot. over it. I didn't have that many stickers. Okay. This was my car right before my Subaru. Oh, it had like one sticker on it. Oh, okay. You, you might be thinking about my Chevy Prism, which was my first car. Yes. That one got told. You graffiti <laughs> that one. And somehow I get all the shit for the bad driving. Never well, had a you speeding don't drive, ticket. You honey. Never you don't drive. But a- also, the car getting totaled, like, it actually wasn't my fault. I was going, like, 10 miles an hour, and I hit black ice and spun into oncoming traffic and got hit by a minivan. That happened. That'll totaled happen. totaled the car. Like, that sucked. But I wasn't breaking any traffic laws. Physics-wise, that doesn't make sense. But yes, I okay. left that <laughs> Nissan in the Burger King parking lot because we moved. And I was like, this car doesn't work. And like, I think, we moved. And I think an <laughs> so unhoused. I left yeah. There. I was like, and I think an unhoused person might be living in it. So I don't want to take it away. Oh. I was going to have it towed by Camel Towing. And just have it donated. Towing. Yeah, my favorite towing. My favorite towing place. What the Camel fuck? Towing. It's in Minneapolis. What is your life? My life is ridiculous. This was so not I that long ago. It. We had the podcast. Oh yeah, when no, this she was like this. three years ago. Yeah, not even. This is when I moved out of that Burger King underground apartment. That was like two apartments ago or two hours ago. Anyway, are you okay? I left it there, and uh, it got towed. To the lot, and then I never picked it up, so they sold it in police auction, and then they mailed me a check for $2.50, which is what I made off of that car after all the fines were taken out of the police auction amount. And I, so, like, honestly, I made money. I was saving money. Your tax at work, folks. And I made money, baby. <laughs> which is more than I would have gotten from Camel Towing because the car was worthless. So they would have towed it for free. And donated the parts that they could yeah. salvage, but I wouldn't have been given a check for that. But I did get two dollars and fifty cents from the city. You're up. So I'm up, baby. Time to go to Vegas. I encourage you not to go to Vegas. 
I encourage everyone to just abandon their car. Long story short, (laughs) abandon your car. There are no consequences. Everything's fine. Well, And you might make money. (laughs) Anyway, finish your uh, case. Kay, you are horrifying. So, (laughs) Amanda is also a habitual traffic violator. Oh, yeah, that's how this started. She's scofflaw. (laughs) And so is James Sullivan. They have so much in common. Yeah, me and Jimmy are like twinsies. Rewinding about 20 minutes to figure out why the fuck we started talking about this in the first place. And so he gets it. he gets pulled over for this fucking fender bender. They realize he has expired registration and his license had been revoked. Fucking get him. Amanda. Get him. Can you I really? have not had my license revoked. <laughs> I have not. Yeah. You did have an expired license for like a year. Oh, oh, way more than a year. Like oh, four years. Yeah, we went on tour. You were driving us all around Texas with an expired no, I, license. I, no, I had my license then. I, I got my license again in 20. It'd be hard to get a rental car with an expired license. You can't get license. a rental car without There was a valid some license. issue, expired insurance. I don't remember. There was some issue where if we had had an issue in Texas, it would have been bad. <laughs> well, it wasn't know. my license. Okay. Wow. So, any Sullivan. number of other things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sullivan was cited with several violations, but when he was due to appear in court, he showed up with Suki in tow, his new wife. Mm -hmm. and claimed that she had been driving the car and that the ticketing officer had made a mistake and mixed them up. Yeah. Okay. That's what they do easily. So Suki backed him up in court and the charges were dismissed, Mm -hmm. which I think is wild. But then the ticketing officer and several witnesses came forward and contested that and being like, fucking no, and now they've perjured themselves. So Sullivan was reissued a ticket for driving with a revoked license and Suki was arrested for perjury. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this seems to have been the final straw for her. She pleaded innocent to the perjury charge and filed for divorce and then went into hiding. Oh, my God. Because she was scared of him because she knew deep down that he fucking killed the last person who tried to divorce her. Suki. Oh, so her divorce papers stated that she had an extreme fear of her husband. Oh. I kind of like feel bad that she would even really get arrested for perjury because it's like, how much agency does she have with this fucking psycho? Yeah. Like he could have been like, here's what you're going to say. Yeah, evidently not a lot. Well, she did plead innocent and like that was probably the grounds on which. I would imagine. You know, but then she went into hiding. So I don't really know how that resolved Turned itself. Out. Poor yeah. Suki. So she also told police that Sullivan had confessed to Lita's murder to her, probably to intimidate her and abuse her and control her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've already killed one bitch. I'm going to kill I'll you next. I'll do it again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sullivan he, oh, I hate him. is maintaining his innocence. He claims that Suki is just trying to disparage him so that she can make out better in their divorce settlement. It's a he said, she said. Mm-hmm. About a year later... Sullivan is indicted by a grand jury for conspiracy to commit murder based on the phone records that like pay phone call and the recorded call where he talked about the gun, talked about the specific gun. Yeah, the nine millimeter. Okay, but the case was eventually dismissed by a judge for lack of evidence. So it doesn't Mm -hmm. mean that it like it didn't go to trial so he can still be tried for it. Without a it won't jury? be like a double jeopardy thing. Oh, I get what you're saying. He can be tried later if more evidence yeah, is uncovered. Yeah, but the judge yeah, was okay. like, there's just not enough evidence. We can't, this can't actually go to trial. So as a response, <coughs> sorry. Okay, John, cut that. Okay. So as a response, <laughs> God, <laughs> Are you allergic to the word response? <laughs> right? It just hit me in exactly the same spot again. <laughs> Try to say yesterday. Yesterday is a hard word for me. <laughs> So Sullivan represented himself in court. Oh, my God. He could have been. This could have been a narcissist crimes yeah. guy. Like Taking every box. Yeah. So. Again, he is not a lawyer. He's no. never been to law school. He was a beverage distribution guy. Air. 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 Yeah. Heiress. So a jury <laughs> found him liable for Alita's death and they awarded her parents four million dollars from his estate nice. but Fucking he good. refuses to pay of pretending to be broke mm-hmm. yeah moving all of his money to an offshore account mm-hmm. 
This isn't maybe entirely untrue. He's now tied up in like another costly divorce with Suki and she mm. is demanding $9,000 a month in alimony. And That's like a lot of money. He also spends a lot of money as a fucking Rolls Royce. Mm-hmm. So finally, in 1998, 11 years after Lita's murder, an anonymous God. tip led Atlanta <gasps> police to a man named Philip Anthony Harwood. Oh, is it the killer? Harwood, who was now living in North Carolina, confessed that oh. Sullivan had paid him $25,000 to murder Lita. Ooh. That's the low amounts of money that we will kill for as, as a human know, race. So sad. Not that much. No, like 25 grand at that time, but it's not like it was still the 30s. Not, it was it's the still late not 80s. a life changing amount of money. Yeah. No. Not no. worth homicide. No. Right. So it now seemed that there was enough evidence to finally charge Sullivan with Lita's murder. But <sighs> when police went to arrest him, he was nowhere to be found. Oh, this Ooh. motherfucker. Where the fuck is he? I'll go Florida. now. <laughs> he had somehow been tipped off to the fact that Harwood was talking to investigators and he fled to Costa Rica. Oh, I was I close. I bet Harwood called him and was like, what the fuck, man? Maybe. I like, don't know. I'm not going down for this. I don't know how he was tipped off. Hmm. The FBI put Sullivan on their 10 most wanted list, and he was eventually also featured on the TV show America's Most Wanted. Ooh. God, you could have used this case for so many I know. things. Mm -hmm. Sightings of him were reported in Venezuela and Panama, but he continued to evade authorities. He's just like hopping around. Panama! <gasps> After four <laughs> years on the lam... He was finally discovered in Thailand, living Thank in a God. beachfront condo with his new Thai wife. Oh, my God. It is this shocking, fucking guy. It's shocking how these people get tracked down like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Fourth wife. And he's just collecting wives like Pokemon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sullivan wife was, go. Uh, Seriously. <laughs> Sullivan was arrested in July of 2002, but was not successfully extradited back to the U.S. to face trial until 2004. So I think he was sitting in a Thai prison for a little oh, while, which that, which good. wouldn't be fun. Yeah, that wouldn't I be fun. I might be begging for extradition at that right. point. Mm -hmm. So the hitman, Harwood, testified at the trial that he had met Sullivan two months before the murder when he had been working for a moving company that delivered a piano to Sullivan's mansion. That's how they met. What a dick. He was what just a like a way to meet. Young guy, young mover guy. And Sullivan yep. was like, hey. Hey, want to kill someone for not a lot of money? Yeah. yeah. I just also think there's like nothing more pompous than, oh, yes, I hired the piano delivery man who had sh uh, appeared in my mansion. Yes. To kill my I couldn't possibly wife. go forward with this divorce. What would well, I do with my look? piano? Ah. He looked like he could use a couple extra bucks. Oh, my God. So Harwood had initially believed that Sullivan was joking when he told him he was looking for someone to take care of his wife. Uh-huh. But then Sullivan asked him for his address, and soon this guy, this, like, young piano mover guy, received $12,500 in the mail as, like, a deposit. Mm. Oh. Mm. Gross. Harwood then he had to. Well, he didn't have to, but well, he... Yeah, but... Yeah. So Harwood then, he was contractually obligated to. <laughs> Harwood then decided to take Sullivan up on his offer and enlisted two friends to help him concoct a plan. So now you're splitting 25 grand between three people. Keep it to yourself. Don't spread yeah. that shit around. They decided that Lita was unlikely to open the door to a strange man, but might be fooled by the charade of a flower delivery. Yep. Son of a bitch. I would yep. be. I know. Any, any. Buddy would be. Yeah. Anybody. Yeah. After this plan proved successful, Harwood had called Sullivan from a payphone to deliver the agreed upon code, which was Merry Christmas. Ew. Ick. I don't like that. Was Not it anywhere around Christmas? It was January. Ugh. At least do a happy new year. God. Okay. So it also became public at trial that Harwood's former girlfriend, Belinda Trahan, had been the one to finally tip police off to his involvement. Mm. In another disturbing tidbit, it seems that Belinda may have been the one to suggest the flower delivery idea. Okay, Belinda, what the fuck? 
Women should be supporting women. Yeah. I know. So I mean, it's, but also, it's a clever just, idea. She she claims that she didn't believe that any of this was actually going to happen, and like was spitballing. Oh, for just doing a little a brainstorm activity. God knows we've done that, right? I know, but something about doing it with your part, your romantic partner about who knows potentially about the their previous partner is a little creepy. Yeah, I we don't, don't know. know the context. I don't know, but always snitch on your on your ex man. Yeah. Yeah. And under the right circumstances, your current man. Right. Mm-hmm. Just always snitch on men. Yeah. Snitch on men. Yes, all men. <laughs> I came so around. She, she also claimed that she didn't believe that he had ever done it until she saw Sullivan personally deliver an envelope of cash to her boyfriend. And then she realized that the hit was real and had happened is what she claims. Ooh. Can you imagine that like realization, that feeling? So. Yeah. Now they finally have a preponderance of evidence against his ass hat, and the trial is two weeks long, and then the case goes to the jury. At the start of the deliberations, the jury was evenly split. Mm-hmm. And this probably had a lot to do with the fact that, like, Philip Harwood and Belinda were, like, not super reliable as witnesses. Like, they kind of got their stories confused mm-hmm. on the stand a little bit, and they fucked up some details, and they just... Mm-hmm didn't seem that great under questioning and Mm -hmm. Harwood at one point said that the mafia had ordered him to kill Lita. Okay. That's like the go-to. It wasn't me. Mm -hmm. So, but there was enough evidence that Mm -hmm. that didn't fucking Sullivan did this. Yeah. Yeah. So the jury was ultimately able to reach a unanimous verdict. And in March of 2006, almost two decades after her murder, Good James God. Sullivan was finally convicted of arranging Lita's murder and sentenced to life in prison without parole. God. Bye-bye. Philip Harwood, the hitman, pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to 20 years in prison, but he has been released. He got out in 2018. Interesting. Hmm. Back to his piano moving days. <sighs> God. And that is the case. Wow. Wow. That was a lot. That was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was a journey. That was a real journey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you sharing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well thanks to wow. our fan picker. Be careful when accepting a flower delivery. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. New fear unlocked. Don't Great. answer the door. Unless it's from books.com. Well, <laughs> they don't. If they just drop it at your door oh, in a package. God. They don't make you talk to That's them. How it That's should how it be. should be. Yeah. Yeah. God. Another plug for books. All right. Let's hear a word from our paying sponsor. Yes. <laughs> We've all heard of gut instinct, but have mm. you ever heard of butt instinct? Oh, I feel like I inherently have this, but tell me more. Yeah. So <laughs> it's when your butt tells you it wants new undies. Yep. So you know what? Listen to your butt. Mm-hmm. Luckily, we work with Me Undies, makers of the most buttery, soft, and sustainable undies, bralettes, and socks that exist on the entire planet. My mm-hmm. whole drawer is just Me Undies. Same. So make your booty and your whole body happy with items designed to make your life more comfortable. I'm I'm wearing them right now. Every Same. pair of underwear in my drawer is now me undies. I like won't put anything else on my downstairs. I also got a new pair in the mail today. They're tie dye and they're way cute. They're so cute. Uh, frankly, when I was trying on wedding dresses, I wore we uh, me undies to my shopping experience because I was like. I'm going to wear these on my wedding day. So <laughs> I'm not I'm not doing, you know, the lacy like thong shapewear. I'm not doing a lacy thong. I'm not going to like all of a sudden become a whole different person for my partner just because we're getting married. It's not happening. Be comfy. And I, yeah, I literally picked a dress that I could rock my me undies other, under and it's the best. So like, join me. Let your skin sing a song of joy with undies, socks, <laughs> bralettes, like loungewear. I have the onesie pajamas. It's it's oh. heaven. It they all feel as if they're spun from silken clouds. Yes. They are guaranteed to be the softest stuff you've ever felt in your life. Their signature micromodal fabric is sustainable, breathable. It's stretchy as all heck. They have sizes available from extra small to 4XL. They have new colors and prints dropping 
weekly. So there's always something exciting to check out. And try their free to join membership for free shipping on every order and exclusive perks like an item shipped to your door every month. I have that. I just like get the gift of underwear monthly. I love it. Secret sales, early access to their newest stuff. I know in the past they've done some like members only patterns that are really cute. I'm obsessed. Yes. So Me Undies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first time purchasers, you get 20% off plus free shipping and returns. So to get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash gals, G-A-L-S. That's MeUndies.com slash gals. And listen to your butt instinct. Yep, listen to it. So your hair, my hair, Amanda's hair, Kenyon's hair, everyone's hair is completely unique to you, to us. Some of us more than others. And so it needs products that address your hair's specific needs. And that Mm -hmm. is where Function of Beauty steps in. It's amazing. It's so customizable. I mean, I talk about this all the time. I have a hodgepodge of things going on. I want to promote growth. I want to promote fullness. I want to promote moisture. I also have to protect color. I also have hair that isn't my hair. Yeah, protect the glue. Yeah, there's a lot going on. And Function of Beauty is the world's first fully customizable hair care that creates individually filled shampoos, conditioners, styling products, treatment formulas, all based on your hair, how it is right now, and also the goals you have for where you want your hair to go and grow. So it's founded by a dream team of engineers and cosmetic scientists, and each Function of Beauty product is individually designed to be as unique as you are. Function of Beauty, okay, if you think that you won't find a formula for you, guess again. <laughs> You're because wrong. they yeah, they offer over 54 trillion possible formulations. <laughs> Every ridiculous. one of them is the, I know it's so many that it sounds like a joke, but it's really not a joke. Like they did the math. <laughs> Every one of them is vegan and cruelty-free. They never use sulfates or parabens. You can also go completely silicone-free and scent-free if you just don't want to deal with any scented products. It's like they have something for everyone. And here's how you do it. First, you take the quick hair quiz to build your hair profile, and you select five hair goals like lengthening, volumizing, oil control. You know, maybe your hair changes up its behavior in like winter or summer. Maybe it gets frizzy in the winter, but maybe it's oily in the summer. Function of beauty formulations are meant to be changed up when your needs change. And it's so easy to do that. Then you choose your color and your fragrance, or you can go dye and fragrance free, like we said before. And then you get your freshly filled formula delivered straight to your door and you prepare for good hair days ahead. So say goodbye to generic hair care for good today. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash gals25, G-A-L-S-2-5, to take your hair goals quiz and you'll save 25% on your first order. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash gals25 to let them know you heard about it from our show and to get 25% off your first order. One more time, that's functionofbeauty.com slash gals25 to take your hair quiz and save 25% on your first order and treat your hair needs. Treat them. Are you ready for my case? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, when I wrote this, I still thought the topic was killer florists specifically. So I I had wanted to do a case that was like a little different from that topic. And while I love the idea of a murderous actual florist, I was more fascinated by murderous flowers themselves. (laughs) (laughs) And I wanted to find like a Victorian era. Yeah, I wanted to find like a Victorian era case of a woman killing her husband with like a deadly lady slipper or some shit. Fox glove. Yeah, it was fox glove. A little fox foot. A little fox foot. A little petite slipper for a fox. I'm a little bit rock and roll. (laughs) So I didn't find exactly that fit, but I did find a case from 2009 that has love, scorn, and a deadly flower. Oh, okay. So Lakvir Singh and Lakvinder or Lucky Chima had been lovers for 15 years. Wow. Where do these people live? I'm going to get to it. Oh, good. They didn't live together, and it was not out in the open that they were together, which we will get to, but... They were together on the down low. Okay. 
They were living in South Hall, West London. So you know what that means. <gasps> geography. Time for some geography. Yes. But also they are they are of Indian, Asian Indian descent. Okay. So, but they live in London. Okay. So Southall was west of Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> east of Cockpole Green. Get <laughs> <laughs> that looked at. <laughs> yeah, it's not safe. <laughs> south of Cockernhoe. <laughs> and north of the bar. These are all just dicks. Dicks there is surrounded a town, by pubes. There's a town in the UK call, just called the bar. Like the bar. I'm going down. I'm going down to the bar for a pint. If you've passed the bar, the you've bar, gone, you've too, gone far. too far. <laughs> wow. Literally, isn't that amazing? Anyway, things Love were it. like happy and copacetic between them until 2012, when Lucky's family, tired of waiting for the 39 year old to choose a bride. His sister took matters into her own hands and she called him up one day and said she had a match in mind that she wanted him to meet a young woman named Gurjeet Chung, who was 17 years his junior. So he are, was 39 and she was like 23. Are Lakvir and Lucky both men? And that's no. why. Oh, Lakvir is a woman. OK. Lucky is a man and Gurjeet is a woman. OK. OK. Yep. OK. So this wasn't a homosexual relationship. That's not why not. they were keeping it a secret. No, it was not. OK. We're going to get to right now why they were keeping it a secret. Great. So Lakvir did not like this, that her, her man was going to marry another woman. No. Despite the fact that she herself was already married, had three children, and her husband was battling cancer. Lakvir. Yeah. Well, she'd been having this affair for a long time. Exactly. Yeah, 15 The cancer 15 was years. probably incidental. Oh, right, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when Lucky agreed to marry Gurjeet, Lakvir lost her shit and threatened to burn his house down. Yeah. <laughs> she did I mean. do that, but <laughs> she did take a trip home to India, seemingly to cool off with family. Okay. What she actually did in India was her fucking research. <laughs> Gather the receipts. Yeah. Well, gather something. <laughs> so... Aconitum, or aconite, monk's hood, wolf's bane, leopard's bane, mouse bane, women's bane, devil's helmet, queen of poisons, or blue rocket. Devil's helmet? Devil's helmet. Women's a, bane. Women's bane. All sorts of banes. Is a beautiful herbaceous perennial plant that grows wild in North America, Europe, and Asia. And that means well, you have to plant it again and again every year. I'm kidding. No, it doesn't. I'm kidding. <laughs> We've been over this. Wait, I still don't know. <laughs> no. Perennial, perennial is grows it'll come back. back. Yeah, because it's through the years. Yeah. Annual, it won't grow back. It's only one year. Gotta do it every year, annually. Mm -hmm. You have to do it annually. Yeah. Moving on. While some of these plants can be handled, like there's different types under this family of acon aconitum. Sorry. There are different little slight variations of it, just like with any other flower. Mm -hmm. While some of these plants can be handled carefully and used in floral arrangements without danger, the majority are extremely toxic hmm. because they contain a chemical element called acon aconitine. So from Wikipedia, aconitine is a potent neurotoxin and cardiotoxin that causes, I'm so high, persistent <laughs> depolarization of neural sodium, ne neuronal, <laughs> neuronal, excuse me, sodium <laughs> channels in tetrodotoxin sensitive tissues. The <laughs> influx of sodium through these channels and the delay in their repolarization increases their excitability and may lead to diarrhea, convulsions, <laughs> ventricular arrhythmia, and death. Market <laughs> symptoms may appear almost immediately, usually not later than one hour. And with large doses, death is almost instantaneous. Woo! Death Woo! usually occurs within <laughs> two to six hours in fatal poisoning of 20 to 40 milliliters of tincture may prove fatal. Nice. The initial signs are Ugh. gastrointestinal, including nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. This is followed by a sensation of burning, tingling, and numbness in the mouth and face, and of the burning in the abdomen. <laughs> Nice. End quote. Nice. Wow. Hold on. If you are allergic to aconitine. <laughs> Transvaginal mesh. This plant does not fuck okay. around. 
<laughs> wow. Did it. All right. So 20 to 40 milliliters can prove fatal. Yeah. What is this. it? I mean, we don't even know what milliliters of like what. Uh, I think like. What's I even a milliliter? We don't if know. Like, if you like crush it and make a liquid right. from it. Yeah. Yeah. So the area <laughs> where Lockfear was traveling in India like had this plant pretty much in abundance. So she carefully got to picking. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. She ground the plant down so as to bring it back to the UK in a sealed container without detection. And as someone who has flown with drugs in my checked luggage many times, this would be incredibly easy to do. Internationally, even. Even in a post-9-11 world. (laughs) Don't do that. Don't sneak plants across international borders. Or don't tell us before you do it. Wait until later so Kenya doesn't freak out. (laughs) So I dumped um, mine in the garbage can. I'm so mad. I would have taken yours. Anyway. I know. I dumped like f- probably 60 bucks worth of mushrooms no! in the garbage can. I got Can't nervous. It's okay. I get it. It's not and if you're worth nervous, the indigestion. If you're nervous, yeah, if you're nervous, you're going to give yourself away. It's so not you worth did it. The, you did the right thing. It's not worth it. I clearly got high before getting on that plane. Yeah. And it was totally <laughs> fine the whole time. If I were smart, I would have <laughs> just shoved it in my mouth. <laughs> Swalt, just tip in a bag. Oh, 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 oh. This is a great airport. <laughs> <laughs> I love Vancouver. Honestly, it's amazing. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, you like walk through a like a like a like a forest tunnel. You walk through you like land. a museum exhibit. It's ridiculous. It has, it has sounds. I it's unbelievable. Love it. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Anyway, so she grinds it down. <laughs> she flies it or trains it back. No one gives a fuck. Under the guise of wanting to make amends and move forward as friends, possibly, or even just, like, to keep hooking up, it's kind of unclear Mm -hmm. why they got together on this particular day. But we'll get to some evidence later in this case that could sway what your thoughts are on the reason behind their meeting. Yeah, or just the reason behind them even getting together in the first place. So they agreed to meet, and Lockveer is like, I'm going to cook for you. And Lucky's like, okay, I love your cooking. I've had 15 years of your cooking. Sounds great. So she had laced the food that she prepared with the aconite and watched him consume what she hoped would be his last meal. And these are the two lovers of 15 years? Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. But he's marrying somebody else and she's pissed. I know. I mean, I know, but like, Mm -hmm. wow. Okay. Yeah. So Lucky almost immediately started feeling ill. And when his symptoms escalated, he went to the hospital. It's a quote from The Guardian. Singh, so Lockveer, went with him and stayed by his bedside each day. It was there that Chong, the uh, Gurjeet. Gun, Gun, Gurjeet, the fiance, realized there had been a relationship and like warned her off, was like, fuck off, we're getting married, like go away. Mm. Lucky was discharged after a week, but doctors were unable to definitively say what had caused the illness, even though he suspected, and so did Gurjeet, mm. of what had caused his illness. But the hospital couldn't confirm it. They were like, it could be food poisoning. That just was really Mm, fucking bad. Yeah. So Gurjeet was not fucking around and fully suspected Lakvir of poisoning her fiance. Mm -hmm. She said, quote, I knew she was jealous of my relationship with Lakvinder. So Lucky. I told her not to interfere in our lives any longer. I told her to forget everything that had gone on in the past. But she said, I cannot forget the feelings that I have. So they'd had that the two women they were having kind of a, a Brandy and Monica moment yeah. <laughs> in the hospital. <laughs> Got it. Uh, so having failed at killing him and now with no way to get him to like agree to see her, let alone mm. eat with her again. Yeah. How's she going <laughs> to fill him with more poison? Yeah. yeah. She decided to step it up. Lakvir snuck into the home. That, like, one report said that he shared this home with Gurjeet. I don't think that's actually true because they were engaged but not married. And they both came from devout Sikh families that would not have been supportive of them well, living together. Well, maybe she lived in a different room and she there did. was a chaperone. Or a different, I know? also think it's possible they had different apartments. Either yeah. way, she was she was there a lot of the time. Yeah. They're, they're engaged. So... Lakvir sneaks into the apartment while they're out. She does this on January 27th, 2009. This is just over two weeks before the couple are are set to wed on Valentine's Day. They have a special wedding date. They're Mm -hmm. getting married on Valentine's Day of 2009. Lakvir went into their fridge and spiked a leftover curry with even more of the aconite, knowing that they would be eating the leftovers within about 24 hours. She's going to kill them both. She's going to kill Gurjeet, too. Yep. 
Spiking the leftovers. Yeah. She snuck back out undetected, or well, as far as she knew undetected anyway, undetected by them, before the couple returned home and sat down to a meal of leftover curry. Wow. They felt unwell very soon after eating it and both laid down on the couch together. Gunjeet said, quote, Lucky ate more than I. After that, he had a second helpings. Ugh. Lucky said to me, I'm not feeling very well. My face has become numb, and when I touch it, I cannot feel it. Oh, no, he that's said not that every food poisoning. Th- it's, no, and that would be, I mean, we'll get to more of the symptoms, but, like, that's this scary. would be a fucked up way to go. It's a neurological. It's, re- it's everything. It's really fucking bad. Mm. So he said that he said that everything seemed to be going dark. He could not see anything and was losing feeling in his body. Uh. She said he was touching his tongue and could not feel anything. He was having to support himself like he couldn't sit up. He said, I think this problem is because of the food we've eaten. I was feeling the same. Everything was going dark. I began to feel dizzy. It was difficult to stand up. My tummy was hurting. Oh. oh. Lucky used his last bit of strength to call an ambulance, and they were found on the couch holding each other, unable to move. Gurjeet later testified that she was unable to walk, that she lost her sense of touch, that she couldn't keep her eyes or mouth open. Oh, my God. Lucky was completely unresponsive. They were, like, oh paralyzed almost. Yeah. Yup. Wow. Well, yeah, yep. the car, it affects which is the, part of the poison, the brain and the heart. Well, wow. yeah. So they were rushed. This part's really sad. They were rushed to West Middlesex Hospital for treatment, and on the way, Gurjeet tried to reach out for Lucky's hand, but she couldn't move. She was but trying to like hold like his hand in like, the ambulance. They like really had like a relationship. I think she was like ex- she she was young and yes the marriage was arranged but I think she was like excited to get married she was yeah. getting to know she him she wanted yeah, to that, make it work that he doesn't wanted to yeah, make she it work. Don't about have him. a bond right. exactly she I, I don't know how bonded I'm making assumptions but he was we'll we'll kind of get well to they it. were He's, hanging out together eating together she, you she know, was there more was bonded to, to him be married yes she was definitely bonded to him more than he was bonded to her mm. that much we know. And we'll kind of get to but why. It's but it's still yes. like that. It's really the, fucking sad. Like that's their fate. That's their future is to be together. Go, going like, on, yeah. And yeah. it's slipping away right before her fucking eyes. Oh, and she can't even goddamn move. Sad. I mean, it, it's horrifying. Gurjeet was put into a medically induced coma as part of her treatment and recovery. And she was awakened two days later with no memory of what had happened. Not like, to make light of this woman's trauma and what no, she but went that through. Sounds but I like a vacation right now. Would freaking love <laughs> that until it's everybody time to knows deliver. how i feel about a medically induced coma i want one this should be offered as a service mm-hmm. i would never want anyone to be put into one for these reasons right i, I wish we could just do a it voluntary as an elective it's a therapeutic yeah. retreat yes mm-hmm. yes i just want to be cryogenically put yeah. on pause they used to like take to the waters i want to yep. take to the medical coma yep. i want to wake up with a fresh manny patty mm-hmm. yep thousand percent so yeah she wakes up she she like i think she has pretty foggy memory of that entire day of the day that she ate the food until she kind of comes out of it and then she can like remember having dinner and then after having dinner is when things start Mm -hmm. to go dark and she doesn't remember the ambulance coming Mm -hmm. she doesn't remember like waking up in the she just wakes Mm -hmm. up in the hospital two days later and is like what the fuck happened i was eating curry 20 minutes ago so Mm -hmm. scary it's a crossfade situation yeah (laughs) lucky unfortunately wasn't so lucky he was pronounced dead within an hour of arriving at the hospital oh my god Uh, yeah it happened fast hand bad I mean, he was completely paralyzed. This is like a particularly awful way to die because victims of aconite poisoning experience violent nausea, vomiting, paralysis, organ failure, like pa- very painful death while remaining conscious and cognitively aware throughout. So you know and feel everything that's happening to you and you can't even open your eyes or your mouth. Ew. You can't do anything about it. You Jesus. just feel it silently. You can't scream you can't complain. It, it's just like Shit, man. Wh- new, like new fear fucking unlocked, yeah. even though this this is not like a, a weed that grows in, in your yard. Like, And even though I didn't say it. Yeah. Yeah. I gave this fear to myself. <laughs> but like that is honestly has to be one of the worst ways to die ever. That's torture for the last hours of your life. Shit. 
thank God it happens like really fast. It's not like days of your life necessarily without medical intervention. I mean, but, like, hours is enough. It's enough. It would feel like an eternity. So mm-hmm. scary. It's like locked in syndrome with fucking pain and organ failure that you are feeling as it's happening. Ugh. I just can't. So Lockveer pleaded not guilty of murder and attempted murder. And during her trial at the Old Bailey in 2010, pointed the finger at Lucky's brother-in-law, Verin- Verinder, or Verinder, excuse me, for the crime. So this actually was kind of a solid attempt at a defense because Verinder, a devout Sikh, was furious to discover that Gurjeet and Lucky had been intimate before their wedding and had even called and, like, made threats to both her and Lucky, which we'll get to more in a, in a moment Dear here. Dear God, keep your religion to yourself. I know. It's like, it is, it's, you know, what's done is done. You don't have to harass each well, other. Well, your brother's fucking dead. His fiance is almost dead. This is what you're going to get pissed about? Jesus. Well, he was pissed before the death. It's that, yeah, they're 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 pointing the finger at him as potentially the murderer uh, because he was so, I he thought, had been calling them and making threats while they were alive. I thought he expressed his pissedness after no, no, no. the fact. No, no, no. He had like popped off on on Lucky because and they Gurdjie. like got it, got it, got dared it, got it, got it. to be intimate before, yeah. while they were engaged before they were married. Yep. Got it. Precisely. But yeah, keep your keep your religious morals to your fucking or, self. Exactly. Yeah. And Lakvir knew about this because, as we'll get to in a moment here, their relationship continued after Lucky and Gurjeet had gotten engaged. Mm-hmm. So Lakvir was like, oh, I'm going to fucking try to blame this guy mm-hmm. because Verinder, yeah. like, she's going to confirm, Gurjeet's going to confirm that this guy was like losing his shit on them because he fucking was. Yeah, of course. So the trial was incredibly rough on grieving Gurjeet as text messages re- revealed that her late fiance had indeed continued his affair with Lockveer after they had become engaged. So this is like mm-hmm. a chunk of court transcript that was in the Daily Mail. Quote, under cross-examination today, Miss Chu, or Cho, excuse me, was read a series of romantic text messages sent by Mr. Chima, Lucky, to Singh, Lockveer. After the engagement by defense barrister Sir Desmond de Silva, barrister, he said, quote, I am sorry to have to put these matters to you. Would you agree with me that it looks as if Lakvir Chima was, oh, sorry, Lakvinder Chima, I'm so high and the names start the same and I'm getting mixed up, <laughs> was cheating behind your back, doesn't it? A tearful Miss Cho replied, having read these messages, it would seem so. Yeah. She told jurors Mr. Chima had said the affair with Singh had ended three years before their relationship started, but she discovered it was continuing. Mm. You were deeply hurt, said Mr. De Silva. Yes, said Miss Miss Cho. When you raised the matter with him, did he deny the relationship with Mrs. Singh was continuing, continued the barrister. Yes, said Miss Cho. Mm. In a text message he sent to Singh on her birthday in October of 2008, Mr. Chima wrote, you be my loved and I will give you all my love. And he was with Gurjeet at that point. Mm. In a further message sent after his engagement to Miss Cho in December, he said, I wait with hope for the night we meet each other in a dream. Therefore, Lucky Chima had really told you a number of lies, the principal one of which is that you would be the only woman in his life after the engagement, said Mr. De Silva. Yes, said Mr. It Joe. sounds like he's trying to pin it on Gurjeet. This is the prosecution that's cross-examining her. Mm-hmm. And so this, I think he's laying the foundation. He's you were about to get to it, but he's laying the foundation to support that Lucky was not like the innocent victim mm-hmm. that he appears to be, and that Lucky's brother also had like strong opinions and anger issues. And so there could have been bad blood between the brother and you guys considering all of this like illicit behavior. Mm -hmm. And this was the brother then that took out, you know. Right. So he's kind of just trying to like break up and fragment all of these relationships to, to, I know to say that might be doubt with all the trust between precisely. And I know that this is the UK, so it might be different than it is in the U S but the defense I mean, no, this is the defense cross-examining her, like defending uh, Miss Singh, Mrs. Singh. So the defense doesn't have to provide an alternative to who killed him. The defense only has to make it seem beyond a, b- a reasonable doubt that she didn't kill him. So he can make the jury feel like, hey, this other possibility is right. out there. And without having to essentially bring Verinder to trial right there in that right. room, can plant that Enough seed of doubt. doubt. 
Exactly. To make it not as easy to put her away. Right. That's all that the defense has to do. Right. And that's what they're trying to do. So she agreed that Mr. Chima's behavior could be seen by some, and their behavior as a couple could be seen by some Sikh families as a great scandal. And his brother-in-law, Verinder, had spoken to her just hours before his death. Mm -hmm. Did he ask you if you were pregnant, said Mr. De Silva? Was he angry and was he swearing a lot? Yes, Miss Cho replied. Did he use the words, I am go going to cover my hands with Lucky's blood and only then my aggression and my anger will calm down, asked the barrister. Yes, she said. Ooh, so she confirmed oh that he was God. saying shit like that. Okay. Mr. De Silva. Pissed. Yeah, he was really pissed. Mr. De Silva continued, at 1.30 p.m. on January 27th, Verinder was making quite clearly a threat to kill. Miss mm. Cho said yes. And that happens to be the same day mm. that, you know. Shit. So Miss, it was Mrs. Singh broke into the apartment. It was her. It was not. It was not the brother. But it, it does look bad the for him. It, but it looks bad for him. And I only really included this as context for understanding why Lockveer is like, yeah, Verinder fucking did it mm. because they knew that this shit was going down. Like oh. she knew that this shit was going down to the family, and this was her defense. Like this was going to be her way out. Smart. But witnesses could put Lockveer at the apartment. That Lucky and Gurjeet had dinner in, like she his apartment, in. on the day they fell ill. And investigators found a container of brown powder in her purse that tested positive for aconite. She claimed this was a medicinal treatment for a rash on her neck. And they're like, well, that rash is about to get a lot worse. Right. <laughs> that was sussed out real quick as absolute bullshit. It's not a topical treatment, you fucking no. psycho. And further testing on the powder revealed it to be like an, a very specific, like in, indigenous to India aconite, mm -hmm. which matches the region from which she picked the flowers to make the poison. Mm -hmm. Cool. So on February 10th, 2010, she was found guilty of murder and grievous bodily harm, but acquitted of the attempted murder charge for the previous poisoning of Lucky that he had survived because, like we said, there hadn't been enough medical evidence to say, yes, he was poisoned at that time. So they had tried to get her on three charges, mm -hmm. murder for him, attempted murder for or like grievous bodily harm for Gurjeet. And attempted murder from his right. from the previous poisoning, but they acquitted her of the attempted right. murder. Okay, but she was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of thirty years, and she remains in prison in the UK. Wow! Wow! wow. Isn't that nuts? That's this a crazy kind of case. aligns with our forensic botany a little mm -hmm. bit. It totally does. Mm -hmm. All our cases really like mm -hmm. crossed a lot reached of over and held hands, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Fucking Thank you. wild. And yeah, special, it was fascinating. This is a great app. But special mm -hmm. thanks to our fan picker, Alyssa Grogan of roguepedalco.com. Oh, I've saved your website. And yeah. uh, thank you all so much. And we'll talk to you next week. Yeah. Yeah, be we will. Be careful gardening. Oh, my God. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kala Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Editing by Jonathan Camp. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wineandcrimepod. If you have questions, answers, or recommendations to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Podcasts. And if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It is the best way to spread the word. If you'd like to show your support, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers!